Hello and welcome everyone to the Comic Multiverse, <laughs> where the worlds of nerd meet. Matt, we are live for the second week in a row. The yeah. second week in the row, and it's working out pretty good as well, straight away, yeah. I think. I've got the green lights, which is a good sign. That is a good sign. Nothing's caught fire yet. Nothing has blown no. up. Nothing is fucked. We got here. We got all the regulars. We got Marvel Knight and Tevya and uh, Amazing Spider-Man and everyone else here in the chat with us. And I'm sure more people will be coming along their way soon once we get the ball rolling. So thank you, everyone, for uh, joining us for what I'm sure will just be just just to be a peach of a show. I'm sure just a, just a shiny penny of a show. Oh, I'm sure it will be. We've got lots of really fun news to talk about as well as like fun Indeed. and not so fun comics yeah we'll get to that when we get to it but uh, how was your week matt how you doing uh it was pretty good it's pretty good i'm fresh from oz comic con i went there on saturday nice. i couldn't go sunday um but i went there yeah. saturday and had a lot of fun i got i got lots of cool footage although some of it i can't use for some reason because it's not Ooh. working on my systems uh oh, which I hate is that. upsetting but um yeah, it was pretty cool. I, 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 I had a casual elevator ride with a guy who plays Kid Flash. Oh shit! What like was it that just, like? It, oh yeah, it, it was. It was. It was like casual. Like I was just in like this elevator going up to like where they have like the um, uh, like the media thing, and, and mm -hmm. he just and he just like stopped the elevator and like got in. I said like hi, and he just like went on his way. It it, it was huh. kind of surreal. <laughs> much much like the show, he was there. <laughs> had a little bit of an impression and then he was gone he was gone in a flash he's a really he was... tall guy as well yeah from what i understand yeah <laughs> well that's cool it's always fun to have those stories i've been telling my uh what is it chewbacca story for the longest time <laughs> when he tapped me on the shoulder from on high because that type of uh man that he was <laughs> <laughs> amazing spider-man says that he met joss keating yesterday that's pretty cool nice He's a cool guy. He was one of the first people I ever got to interview back when I worked at Name Redacted. Nice. Yeah, he's a he's a cool dude. Uh, uh, so, yeah, do we want to hop into the news for this week there, Matt? We actually do have some rather interesting topics. I can see the chat is definitely chomping, chomping at the bit about it. Yes, yes. Let's hop into it. Uh, all righty then. So I guess the first piece of news here, uh, it was Batman Day uh, yesterday. Mm-hmm is what it was which I, it's so hilarious to me batman day i'm like isn't every day batman day it is at DC like what, what, Comics? what's different about this day oh someone just posts happy batman day but like you do that every other day <laughs> i mean it is always batman about it he's he is always being celebrated i don't know why he needs a special <laughs> day to celebrate him and a fortnight thing yeah oh, the fortnight thing was beautiful beautiful just doing one of the i don't know what fortnite dance that was on the place where his parents were gunned down is just it's, it's what oh, bob yeah. kane and bill finger would want most definitely man fortnite is huge the fact that they get both the dc tie-ins and the marvel tie-ins that's how massive they are <laughs> yeah yeah never did i think you'd see a company that gets both but yes it was batman day so it was the perfect time to finally announce the question that I know has been on our minds, Matt, ever since we heard that Tom King's supposedly 100-issue run was getting cut short, only to be replaced by another 12-issue miniseries, which is what it should always have been anyway. But we finally know, officially, rumors were circulating, but the rumors turned out to be true. Uh, you know, favorite of the show, I think, uh, James Tyne in the fourth will be taking the reins on Batman. Yeah, the, this is, it's kind of, like a no-brainer as well since he's he's written like batman and robin eternal uh detective, detective Com comics. comics all those things in the past so he's kind of like like built himself up a good resume to take over the main batman book and i'm really up for it i'm, I'm enjoying like what he's doing with like justice league Justice League dark and stuff like that yeah. so i'm very much excited for that He's, he's just killing it across the board right now. He's shown that you can give him something and he will turn in just tops material mm -hmm. of it. I don't think Justice League Dark has ever been as big as it is under him right now. He's also doing really well in the realm of indie comics. I haven't read it yet, but he has that new, very Stephen King-inspired book, There's Something Killing the Children, which apparently is just getting rave reviews. Mm -hmm and actually pretty good sale, so I'm sure this is also DC trying to play some chess, too, of being like, hey, man, uh, maybe you want to re-up with us here, and you want to yeah, yeah. write Batman and everything. <laughs> it also helps, too, that he was brought into the company by Scott Snyder and is a student of yep. 
the last guy who did the last Batman run that everyone universally agreed they enjoyed. So, yeah, it's a no brainer of a get for them. Now, I have heard some rather interesting scuttlebutt around what the what his time on the book will imply. Uh, one thing we know for certain that is not a rumor is that they are going to be fixing, as Space Lord brings up in the chat, they will finally be fixing old Rick Grayson. They're finally <laughs> going to fucking do something about this and get Nightwing back to being Nightwing. Thank God. <laughs> I heard that someone asked him, because at the same time there was... Uh, at some con, there was some panel where Dan DiDio was, and someone actually asked him about um, the Night Ring Rick, Rick Grayson thing, and apparently he looked very uncomfortable and said that he'll be coming back soon. <laughs> Good. This is so funny, too, because this also confirms basically a bunch of stuff that I was already tinfoil hat thinking, and that is, hey, why didn't you turn Dick back into himself sooner? Oh, we had to wait till Tom King was off the book, though, because that was his idea, and we didn't want to rock the boat and offend him, <laughs> because even though we had no plan for it, it was his idea, and we had to run with it. Someone else also asked Tom King on Twitter, I don't know if you saw this, but they said, uh, hey, you know, do, do, were you planning on fixing him? Were you ever going to do more with nightwing and he's like oh i love nightwing i really wish i could have worked with him more <laughs> it's like but you, you you could have if you didn't shoot him in the fucking head <laughs> you, you were planning for a hundred issues then you made him not himself then you got the last 12 issues taken away from you <laughs> and they were only doing this to appease you what the uh. Uh, Again, <laughs> furious, but confirms what I already believed, and that is a perfect snapshot of comics where it's like, why do bad ideas keep going for as long as they do? Because they don't want to offend certain writers, that's yeah. why. High-tier writers that, like, come up with the idea, you, you can't tell them no, basically. But yes, I'm very happy that Nightwing will be coming back, and that also, I'm sure, leads to the question, well, who's going to take over Nightwing now? It would be fucking hilarious if they're like, hey, Tim Seeley, remember uh, how you saved uh, <laughs> Nightwing when we made him a secret agent, and that should have been terrible, but you, and admittedly Tom King, too, did a good job, uh, and then you made him Nightwing again, and everybody really liked that, and you reestablished his city, but then we fucked that up. Uh, would you like to come back and write him again, maybe, and fix what we broke again? <laughs> I, I would like... What I would like is I would like for the Nightwing book to actually come to an end. Uh, mm. Him move over back into the Batman book so it becomes like Batman and Nightwing teaming up mm. for like a couple of arcs. And then he spins off into like a relaunch series. That would be fun, especially too because we don't really have a Batman and Robin book right now. So that yeah. would actually make a lot of sense yeah. to do something. I'm fine with that, yes, because Tynan loves the sidekicks and mm -hmm. he especially loves dick grace and so yeah let him lead the charge in rehabbing the character he certainly needs it. in fact everything they kind of talked about tynan's time on the book reeked to me of like and here's james to fix everything tom broke yeah yeah it it, it screams that it it absolutely screams that it sounds like he's gonna be fixing probably it'll probably pick up like where tom king's book uh, leaves but like immediately just start fixing shit that he, he's yeah. done and everything and I'm, I'm all for that i am all for that because everything tom king has done has just been terrible yeah i know it really and you need someone to rehab but it's also kind of weird too because some people have theorized uh this was the other bit of scuttlebutt that was uh coming uh when this new writer was announced so he comes in on issue 86 yes mm-hmm the rumor is is that he's actually only getting 12 issues because he's only a stopgap writer because once they hit issue number 100 that's going to be about uh you know december about heading into 2020 and that's when they're going to roll out their new black batman yeah i could see that i could see that to where i'm like man that's got to be so that's got to be like such a sour taste in your mouth as james hey you finally get to write batman fix everything this guy broke then get off in a year yeah, yeah, I, I feel like a Band-Aid fix sort of thing, uh, like what they're doing with, like, Flash Forward now at the moment. Uh, exactly. Although they're really not. We'll get to that later. We'll get to that. Don't oh, worry. Oh, oh I, 
I'm sure, I'm sure we will. But yeah, couldn't be more happy for James Tyne, and he is a very nice dude. I can say I've actually chatted with him at a couple conventions right now. He was actually one of the first people I interviewed again back when we worked at Name Redacted. <laughs> but yeah, he's a, he's a gent, and also something two people aren't mentioning about this. This is also kind of a pretty cool progressive move as well, because James Tynan is an out-and-out -out bisexual, so a queer man is actually writing Batman now. And I don't think that's ever happened before, to my well, knowledge. See, now people know, so now people are going to get offended. <laughs> get mad about, of course. Yeah, I, sh I shouldn't have said anything. Somewhere James is like, God damn it. Why, why did you say that people forgot about that? That Like, when, like again, he's not shy about mentioning If you've read his books, it's no. very much in there. This is the dude who invented Harper Row and cared about that. That's the question. Is Harper Row going to come back in his new <laughs> Batman now? Uh, She's in Young Justice, so I wouldn't be shocked. <laughs> I, I wonder, will we actually get to see him bring back Clayface, too, or any of the unresolved storylines from Detective? Oh, I really want that Clayface story to come back. That was one of the best stories he wrote for the it Detective. Was. It was so damn good. And it was so good because it had an end, and they actually left it alone. Yep. yep. They left it alone like good stories should do to leave it in their place. But yeah, I would like that. Uh, he actually asked people on Twitter. I don't know if you saw there, Matt, but he said, you know, what would you all like out of a Batman book? And of course, everyone has, you know, the typical answers you hear all the time. Where it's like, I want to see, you know, them focus more on him as a detective. I want to see, you know, more focus on the dichotomy of Batman and Bruce Wayne. I want to see more of the Bat family. To where I'm like, well, he's certainly not going to be doing the Bat Family thing because he already <laughs> did that in Detective Comics. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I and again, I don't know if you agree with me on this one, Matt. This is maybe a more controversial opinion yeah. I have always held, and that is that hey, Batman should be the superhero book, and Detective Comics should be the mystery crime solving book. But over the years, we've seen that kind of get passed around. Yeah, no, I agree. It's the same with like Superman, where Superman should be the superhero superman mm. book whereas action comics should be about his secondary characters kind of like how it is at the moment with like the the daily planet and everything like that yeah yeah again it seems it seems weird in that regard it's, it does feel like it's been a while mm -hmm. since we've had like a really good batman mystery i think the last time where i was really like looking for clues and everything and involved in a batman mystery was when tomasi took over detective and of course we found out it was all actually a simulation but hey, it was pretty cool yeah, I, I really enjoyed that story. That was pretty cool. It's also clear that uh, Tynan's favorite Robin is Tim Drake. Do you think he's going to get to steal him away from Brian Michael Bendis and write about him? Or do you think Bendis has just, you know, got a death grip on him? Uh, I, I, th I think maybe he, he'll be able to. Uh, so, mm. or, as well as like like continuity is like at the fucking window at the moment at DC. So you can d do whatever you want. It's like the Wild West over there. It is, and there does seem to be, because I read the solicitations too, and it sounds like in Detective Comics there's an art coming up where uh, Batman and Damien are going to be hanging out and mm -hmm. doing the Batman and Robin thing, and I'm like, oh good, a writer is finally dealing with the fact that, you know, Damien is being a little asshole and doing bad non-Batman things. Yeah, I think Tomasi's going to be writing about that, that story where he, he's basically confronting him about the gulag he has. Yeah. And the wiping of people's minds. Apparently that's the new thing. Apparently, oh no, no, Jewel, he's not just putting people in gulags anymore. He's also, you know, <laughs> messing with people's minds. Oh yeah, because the Justice League didn't learn that lesson the hard way. No, no. It, but yeah, it, it's all going to be very interesting. As well as like, as well as with this news, did you hear that like in, in Tom King's run, we're going to find out about, because apparently he's, he's starting to bring stuff with the button in as well. Oh and, boy. Um, uh, he's, he's, we're going to find out about, thomas wayne's like how he's there in issue 84 <laughs> again not to spoil it not to bury the lead but i'm sure if any of tom king's other reveals are a good indication uh the button actually won't be about any of the things you think it about and it will all be about him because everything is ultimately about yeah. tom king in one it, way or another it will be about how he unified batman or some right. bullshit you know with his father or something like that because it was all about me. Yep. Oh, as KT reminds us in the chat, really, Imiko was the one who murdered Deathstroke. Again, I have not been keeping up, but I know they killed Deathstroke off recently. Really? She was the one? 
Fuck you, Adam Glass. Why? <laughs> I liked it. Imiko was a cool new character that you invented. This 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 is where DC's dropping the goddamn ball when it comes to their young people character. They're either getting abused or buried or doing character assassinating things like this. Meanwhile, you look over at Marvel and it's like, oh, we're the champions. We're so much fun. We're getting TV shows now and everybody loves us. Remember remember in that green in the Rebirth Green Arrow run where they had Imiko come in and like she didn't like she she the whole arc was her about not being like her mother or anything yes. and being different and being part of team era and then, and then they come mm. out i'm just gonna kill deathstroke that that and damien shooting black mask in issue mm-hmm. one is why i quit that series at issue one i'm like okay so you're you're not gonna be doing anything i want now and i can tell <laughs> this is junior suicide squad god damn it <laughs> Tevi is saying in Roundhouse is a trap. I don't even know who that is. Yeah, Tevye. who the that's fuck is Roundhouse? Re- yeah, that's how little I have actually been reading. <laughs> yep, they made Emiko just straight up a clone like her mother. That's mm-hmm. a shame. That's a real. Wow. That's missing the point. And again, man, poor, poor Jeff Lemire and Benjamin Percy, who tried so hard to write that character <laughs> and to make them something different in the DC universe, only for them to try and screw them up. Meh. Yeah. That's a shame. But uh, yeah, B- Batman, we're very excited for what Tynan is going to do there. I'm sure he will surprise us with what he does. Oh yeah, no doubt. No, it's going to be fun. It's going to be great to actually have two, probably three Batman books that are actually really damn good. That are worth it. Re- yeah, because there's going to be that Ellis one soon as well. Mm-hmm. And there's Batman Universe going on at the moment, which is really damn good. I got to catch up on that. I got to do like a story so far on that is what I got to do. Yeah uh all right what else we got going on here uh from the world of comic books to the world of television tom welling has officially been announced that yes he will indeed be taking part in the big dc uh cw uh crisis event and i mean really why not they've already done basically everything (laughs) they could possibly do i'm so so glad they they got him as and as well as as tevia points out i was and i was going to say anyway uh the lois lane from smallville is back as well that's cool that's also really cool so again this is the grand unifying theory when it comes to all of these uh what is it? all of these different superhero shows that have been on the cw and that's that just feels good doesn't it, it? yeah it's really great as well because as, as mark guggenheim pointed out like this is this is the show that like made it possible for them to make arrow and flash and all of that True. so it's only only right that they they bring them back and it's going to be even more interesting because i worked it out so like the the finale of smallville takes place like the end part of of that takes place seven years in the future from when that show ended so it ended in 2011 uh-huh. so that takes place in 2018 which means the crisis will be about a year after the show actually ended oh shit so huh. it's an interesting time to be to be there because that's that's basically when when that smallville season 11 comic took place nice isn't it just really nice and refreshing, though, to see some people working in the arm of DC Universe creative where they're like, no, we love history and we love <laughs> what came before and we're going to honor all of it because it's all DC TV, whether you were Tom yeah. Welling or Burt Ward or the original Wonder Woman show or the original Flash show. It's all in here, man, and it's all going to be represented in a crisis. And I'm like, man, it's a shame that the movies <laughs> – may never get to this point did you ever imagine that like the tv shows would be doing stuff like multiverses and going to different earths and all of that sort of stuff before the movies even like glimpsed that before the movies even got superman right like again the movies are still doing origin stories no i never did but honestly looking at it here tv as a sequential art form may actually be the future of these comic book mm-hmm. stories because you can do more in television you can do more in arcs now i'm not saying everything in the cw has been perfect it really has not but man when they get it right they get it super right and one of the things they get super right is the fan service oh yeah yeah the the fan service the the like actually having read what they're referencing and getting that all right and all that sort of stuff it it's so cool it's so cool can't can't come soon enough i guess this all starts in october right because like all the big shows start back up in yeah, october i actually yeah i think it begins like end of october start of november i think and goes through because it's it's five nights right so, of course and 
and uh, an arrow is going to be worth watching too you were saying this season <laughs> well i think the arrow one is going to be the finale because it's or the finale of arrow it'll right. be like the, the the final episode of arrow so that that's, that'll be interesting and yeah i think it will be worth watching since oliver ends up going off with the the monitor to do shit so mm. it'd be quite interesting and the fact that we have a monitor that actually looks like yeah. a monitor is supposed to look ain't that some shit yeah. and the anti-monitor looks like how the anti-monitor should look like <laughs> thanks tv <laughs> Oh, also, uh, Jersey Luck is sure to remind us it's December and January. Okay, thank you. So it's a little further off because we got the seasons of television, and that's like their second half of the season, big stuff. Mm -hmm. Also, too, Jersey Luck, I really misread your name. I think my uh, selective dyslexia kicked in there for a second because I thought that L was an F. <laughs> Which, you know, that's fine, too. Again, you know, you're, you're really letting us know what you're all about. I'm from New Jersey, and I love to do that other thing. <laughs> uh, KT mentioned, yeah, of course Green Arrow's got to come to an end because uh, Stephen Amell's got to run off and join AEW. I mean, probably, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what's he got going after this? <laughs> Maybe AEW. Matt, that's the thing we got to do for a commentary. I know you don't watch wrestling, but I really got to show you Stephen Amell's wrestling match against Christopher Daniels at the original All Out. Because the level of shit he does is shit that no self-respecting, high-paid, handsome guy actor should ever have to do. He goes through tables. He gets smacked in the face. He really hurts himself. Well, I think he does a lot of his own stunts on uh, oh, yeah. uh, on Arrow, I think. I think he does too, yeah. But yeah, the shit he does. Would people like that, everyone? That me showing Matt a wrestling match? <laughs> we could do that I a mean, live show as well. <laughs> yeah, I've been doing like special uh, like ones once a month over on uh, Patreon because I want to try and keep the Patreons nice and happy. I feel like that's something we need to do. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's one. <laughs> as Batman Z brings out, did you watch the WW or uh, WB Birds of Prey series? Is that going to be involved? No, I don't think so. And that's a good question. Yeah, gotta gotta bring that Birds of Prey show but, in that no one remembers. That, that that would actually be pretty cool. I know they um apparently Guggenheim tried to get the guys from Krypton on on board I but the, the schedules couldn't like because they were off doing other things the schedules didn't work that's such a shame man that's so because we could we could have had a doomsday in that show man or a lobo yeah <laughs> there are so many things we could have had now we will always wonder what if <laughs> Uh, now, what else do we have here? Oh, so in really weird out of left field news, uh, you know, Matt, how DC uh, the last couple of years, they did their big crossovers with all like the uh, Looney Tunes characters and everything. So you had like Joker and Daffy Duck and Lex Luthor and Porky Pig. Mm -hmm. And you know how they also had their weird fast food crossovers like the Flash and Colonel Sanders. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is not the weirdest thing Colonel Sanders has been involved in. Have you seen that <laughs> Japanese KFC dating game? <laughs> yes, oh yes, and the, yeah, those comics that where he's like the multiversal Colonel Sanders and what is wrong with the Japanese, I ask. But no, DC and Warner Brothers is planning to top that completely with their next crossover that makes you go, Who? What? <laughs> Who asked for this? Apparently, the DC Universe in October uh, for Halloween is going to have a series of short one-shots involving Sven Gulli. Yes, the, the master of horror. Sven Gulli, and I know all of our fans of a certain age are like, did Joel just have a stroke there? What's a Sven Gulli? <laughs> is, is that like grabbed by the Ghoulies? Is that like the Babadook? Uh, so Sven Gulli was a TV host in the Chicago area who uh, managed to receive a big level of fame. He was basically like Elvira, Mistress of the mm -hmm. Dark, only he was a dude. Yep. And, you know, and, and, you know, also didn't age nearly as well as Elvira did. Seriously, <laughs> if you see Elvira at a con, I, I want what that lady has because she does not look as old she as she is. She found the fountain of youth, man. man. The blood of the innocent, dark yeah. <laughs> forces keep her young. That's what you get when you sell your soul. <laughs> but, yes, yeah, Sven Gulli is going to be crossing over with the DC Universe, which only lets me know that somebody in management is a big fucking fan of Sven Gulli. And for those who don't know here, look, I'm actually going to link this in the chat, how you actually spell his name. Cause I get the feeling a lot of you, especially those of you watching live right now <laughs> are going to want to Google this guy and be like, what the, what the hell is a Sven Gulli? That's a Sven Gulli. It's it's yes. He, he, he dresses up like, like uh, how uh, Rob Zombie dresses every day yeah. He's, yeah he's a human cartoon character yeah is what he is it, it's gonna be he's, interesting because i've really liked these like 
like horror like one shots they do around around mm-hmm. Halloween and like the Christmas one shots and stuff like that. Uh, Don, uh, Dante Kelly has a good one there. <laughs> Batman should meet the Adams family. Yes, he should. Everyone should cross over with the Adams family. Didn't didn't they do that in like the '60s Batman cartoon? Or am I? No, I'm thinking Scooby Doo mm-hmm. crossed over with the Adams family, and Scooby Doo also crossed over with uh, the '60s Batman. So yeah, there's yeah. a couple degrees of Kevin Bacon between <laughs> Batman and the Adams family. <laughs> yeah, that that'd be cool. Or like Justice League Dark meet them. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. They, they, they move instantly... into the house of mystery or something. Oh, and they instantly assume they must be villains because they're mysterious and spooky and all yeah. together, ooky, yeah. they're the and, Adams family. And one is just a hand, and the other one is just one basically is... Frankenstein. Yep, and then you find out, no, we're not evil, we're just really fucking eccentric. <laughs> Oh, man, the thing that bothered me, I'm sure you saw this, the trailer for that new CG uh, Adams Family movie. Mm -hmm. I was really excited about that because it had an amazing cast like Oscar Isaac is in it Mm -hmm. and friggin' uh, Haley Steinfeld. What hurt me when I watched the trailer is they totally don't get the joke of the Adams Family, and that is the Adams Family in this movie know they're weird. I'm like, no, that's (laughs) not the joke. The Adams Family think they're normal. Yeah, and everyone else is weird. (laughs) And that's why it's funny. You've already ruined the joke. You proved you didn't get it because you're reworking it into a, oh, just be yourself type of story. No. What what got me was they decided to go with Snoop Dogg for the theme. <laughs> sure, why not? Because <laughs> when I think Adam's family, I immediately think Snoop Dogg, you know, the rapper. <laughs> Snippity diggity, everybody. Hey. <laughs> But yeah, that's that's a shame, everyone, because I really wanted to like that Adams Family movie when I heard they were making a new one. But eh, it is what it is. Oh, the chat actually reminds me of another crossover that I actually didn't put on the list. Thank you, chat. I knew I was forgetting something. But uh, the Power Rangers are going to be crossing over with the Ninja Turtles again in the world of comics. Cool. That's genius because they already crossed over on TV once before. The real mm-hmm. joke is, is do they remember that or not? Because Oh, I'm the sure original. they'll reference that. I am sure. Because this is the OG Turtles crossing over with the OG Rangers, where before it was the Next Mutation Turtles crossing over with the In Space Power Rangers. I'm sure they'll reference it somewhere. I'm sure they'll have to, because that's pretty funny. Yeah, can we get a second, like, volume for the Justice League Power Rangers book? That was a fucking awesome book. It was. Apparently it sold poorly for some reason. Oh, (laughs) really? Yeah, apparently it was like, yeah, because they almost didn't come out with that last issue. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, apparently some wires really got crossed there for whatever reason. <laughs> that's weird. Do you think that would be a license to print money? Yeah, apparently exactly. not. Weird. Very, very weird. Uh, what else we got going on here in the world of news? Uh, oh, more comic news for you. DC's Birds of Prey book, the new one, which I honestly forgot was coming out, written by Brian Azzarello, is going to be postponed to 2020 now, probably to get it closer to the release of the Birds of Prey movie. And it's going to be an adults-only black label book. I saw, I saw the um, the covers for that, and uh, guess who's guess who, guess who's on on the cover? Is it, is it a certain clown woman we all know and love? Yeah, yeah, it is. Shocker. Uh, yeah, it, I, 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 got, I apparently like pissed off a lot of people because I that we had that Birds of Prey poster come out, and mm-hmm. of course, like eighty percent or ninety percent of the poster is Harley Quinn, and I'm oh, like, oh, Harley. guess who this movie's about, guys? And it was, oh, it's about yeah. the Birds of Prey. Like, it really isn't though, because they're like five percent of the poster, whereas Harley's on there twice. When you take a character who wasn't part of the team, make them the focal point of the marketing, but then mm-hmm. still try and say it's a team movie, which in fairness, so was Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad was also the Harley Quinn show as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. The, and pe- pe- people were saying to me that, that this movie wouldn't have happened because of Margot Robbie and everything. I'm like, it probably would have. You know, it, it, it's got that yeah. Batman to end. That's the thing. They, they don't even have Batgirl in this film. I didn't actually realize that. No, yeah, it's like, well, well, why do we need her? We have Harley Quinn now. Yeah. Also, on that poster, Victor Zaz is on that poster. You wouldn't recognize him because he doesn't have no, any I'm... scars at all or look like an actual fucking serial killer. Well, Black Mask also doesn't have a black mask in this universe, so, you know. Yeah, apparently he yeah. doesn't even wear a mask. Or, or look, you know, like disfigured or anything like he should. You had, he just you looks had like Ewan McGregor in a, in a flamboyant suit. 
you had you had one you had one <laughs> job you had one job <laughs> look i'll even settle for like like a black gimp hood that he wears at one point or like a black domino mask or something but nope nothing no nah, no nah. Very, very, very weird. I mean, the movie could still be good, but it's not Birds of Prey. It's Harley Quinn and the Harleyettes is what it is. Yeah, yeah. She's ne never been part of that team and on is only now retroactively being put in that team because of the film. Much as she was never part of the Suicide yep. Squad for decades, but is now retroactively the focal point of that book. And in fact, is kind of the focal point of DC Black Label Phase 2 in general, because there's how yeah. many new Harley-related oh, books that are coming out in Black Label? There's that one that comes out this week, which I'm probably not going to review because I just have no interest in it because it's not going to do anything new. Right, there's the, uh, there's the criminal sanity thing, uh, yep. there's the breaking glass one and yep. then uh yeah and then i guess birds of prey too plus i mean technically she's a focal point in white knight as well but i like white knight <laughs> yeah and and it was kind of a focal point there for a minute in batman damned also that too i forgot about that so yeah maybe we've been wrong this whole time calling it bat label maybe it should be har label because it really <laughs> is all about her right now it is harley is a busy woman this these days chat you're absolutely right yeah Secret boss sauce overexposure? Nah. I mean, DC are kings of that right now. I mean, there's how many Batman books and Batman family books? Hey, if you love it, you're going to see it. Yeah, oh yeah. And if you don't love it, you're going to see it. <laughs> you're going to see it. Jersey Luck has a point too, but Steven Sajak's art, it looks very nice. There's no denying that. I'll probably look at it. Again, my hopes, because again, I feel like I've been burnt on pretty much all the black label books, but I mm -hmm. will look in its general direction. <laughs> Man, there's just oh, oh Harley's little black label, Amazing Spider. Buy that man a coke. He got it. Harley's little <laughs> black label. That's what they're gonna name it, guys. Now you, you trademark that. Trademark that. So they have to buy that from you for billions. And as Dante is also quick to remind us, fourth pillar of DC, son. Yes, she is the fourth pillar. Yes. Wonder Woman, who? <laughs> yeah, yeah. She she's taking Wonder Woman's place in the Trinity. Yeah, what's what? What's she the spirit of? You see, you got you got justice, you got money, hope, money. Yeah, money, and I'm Harley, and I represent cold hard cash, baby. <laughs> uh, that's fun. And again, I don't hate Harley Quinn, but again, it's gotten to the point now where it's like I don't feel I need to read about her either. Yeah, it's like what more can be said about her? Like they seem to be retreading the same stories over and over again, and then when they do do something new, it just kind of like runs in place for a long time and then they like revert that. back to those old stories like when I, like i read all of the jimmy paul me audio amanda connor stuff when it was coming out when she was becoming that fourth mm -hmm. pillar and i'm like man this is really good and really funny and really unique oh but it's also not it's canon but it's not canon oh yeah. that's rough so all this development she has here also doesn't really matter that's a shame Apparently it's still very funny though. Like uh, someone shared with me a couple panels there. Apparently they're doing like a City of Bane story right now, but the joke is is that it's all like the super villains in their old Batman the Animated Series costumes, and like <laughs> Harley's just making fun of how stupid it is. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> and I'm like, That's all right. I'm cool. But yeah, she should be. She should just be trying for the insult comic dog. She should just be like, uh, what is it, Mystery Science Theater for what's going on in the rest of the yeah. universe. <laughs> Yeah, well, she, she, like, what is it? She, for a moment there, and she kind of still is, she's basically become what Deadpool was, like, three mm. years ago, whereas Deadpool's had, like, some really great comic runs since then, but, like, there was a moment there where he was just, like, all memes and just all catchphrases. People forget that Jerry Duggan run that ended, oh yeah, treated him like an actual character with pathos yeah. and shit. They, they were calling that Harley book a Deadpool ripoff for so long. Paul Miotti and his wife literally created a character called Red Tool, <laughs> who was literally just re Deadpool in this universe, so they could uh, clown on him there. <laughs> which is hilarious. I am looking forward to that Year of the Villain Mark Russell book from a uh, Harley-centric one, because, man, if anyone can actually try and figure out something with this character. Oh, it's Mark <laughs> Russell. His, his book, that, that has me excited, and it's probably one of the only Harley books I'll actually really enjoy because of him. Yeah, for real. Because, again, I think you could give her the Deadpool treatment of being like, I am Harley, the sad clown now. No one sees my pain. Mm-hmm. 
But, you know, we're not going to do that now because it's hard to sell that character. <laughs> yeah, she's now just going to be like a, a strung out meth user on the way back from Coachella. Oh, uh, no. All right. Sure. Whatever. <laughs> Uh, what else do we got going on here? Oh, one last piece of news here, and this is Marvel-centric. Uh, the solicitations came out, and we now know a little bit more about Annihilation. It's not going to be a whole event. It's just going to be a five-part cosmic series that's going to cross over Silver Surfer, Beta Ray Bill, the Fantastic Four, etc., uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. It looks cool. It does. It looks really cool. And uh, I'm in, intrigued to see because uh, the writers said that they're going to honor the stuff that happened in, in the original Annihilation. Uh, so I'm nice. intrigued to see what that 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 stuff is because lots of stuff Same. happened in that fucking series. It really did. We brought back a bunch of heralds and we killed a bunch of heralds. Yeah, yeah. There was a big wave. Also, too, uh, it's called Annihilation, but apparently they're going to be working with Annihilus now. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, Annihilus isn't going to be a bad guy in this one. I'm like, all right, so what? Is, what is this other Annihilation wave? Because it doesn't always have to refer to Annihilus. What's this other thing? Is it going to be like a rogue, like Annihilus child or something? One of his spawn mm. has gone rogue or something? It's going to be null. Oh, yeah, it's always null. It always comes always. back to null. <laughs> Which I don't hate that idea because no. again they have they have set up the fact in a uh, Silver Surfer Black that like uh, Norrin Rad went back in time and met Null so he yeah. knows he's a big deal. Yeah, I'm gonna cover the Earth in symbiotes. You'll see, <laughs> all symbiotes all the time. <laughs> but yeah, that uh, that was the news uh, for this week, everybody. That was the news. Uh, before we hop on into what we read this week, uh, let us take this opportunity to maybe take some questions uh, from the chat. Let's do that. Yeah, I, I, tr I try and get them involved as much as possible without breaking the immersion of the show, but I figured this is a good time to do this. Mm -hmm. So, how's everybody doing? What's everybody got to say? Mm -hmm. how, do, how do I feel about Wally West Flash? Wait until I talk about Flash, uh, Flash Forward. <laughs> uh... A bit of Vita saying I've been meaning to get into Kate's Guardians of the Galaxy because it's Case and the lineup looked really fucking cool. Though I've heard mixed things on it now. Anyone recommend it? Yeah, I've been enjoying yeah, it. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. Yeah, it's cool. It's it's definitely much better than what Bendis and who everyone else was doing when it came to Guardians of the Galaxy. It feels important. Like yeah. it feels like if you want to know what is going on in the Marvel Cosmic set, this is this is what you need to read. Yeah, I would suggest also just like brushing up on what happening in infinity war wars don't yeah. actually read infinity wars because it kind of turned out to be nothing but like brush up Get on like synopsis. what happened on the broad on the broad strokes of it mm -hmm. amazing spider-man said he finally pre-ordered disney plus i have not done that yet because canada but i we'll think see. i think uh subscriptions just opened like as we're doing this podcast oh. so i'll have to give a look at that i don't know whether i'll pre-order i'll probably just wait until a couple of days before it actually comes out yeah it's it's like you know i always hate being an early adopter it's like let l let's give it some time on my end and see how people work it out yeah <laughs> uh crusader con asking get any switch games yet yes i got marvel i'm proudly a switch owner now <laughs> finally i've been playing the shit out of marvel and my review so far i just uh, i just got to the x mansion and i'm doing that stuff oh yeah you got some really cool su stuff in front of you Indeed. Uh, I, I, again, you know, I think my review is in line with a lot of other people's reviews, and that is, you know, yeah, it can be a little repetitive at times, but fuck it, I can make a team of whoever I want, and yeah. they can fight hand ninjas and get pieces of the Cosmic Cube to power them up. That, that's cool. I just, I wish that, like, to begin with, they, they put in alternate costumes and that weren't just mm -hmm. recolored. They did that kind of after the fact, after everyone kind of complained. Um, yeah. So yeah, that that was like really my only complaint, but I really like that game. But are, are you have you got any other games? No, that's all I got all so right. far. You got to get and Astral Chain. It, I got to get Astral Chain. I'm going away to Con, so I got to watch my money. So probably when I come mm -hmm. back, I will try and shop for some some ones there. Yeah, I want to play Astral Chain. I want to play uh, the new Pokemon. I want to play mm -hmm. the Hyrule Warriors because that looks like a really great version of <laughs> Dynasty Warriors. Yeah, you gotta you gotta get the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild as well because that mm. that that's a that's a, like an amazing open world game. 
so I've heard. Uh, that Damon X Machina looked fun. There's a mm -hmm. lot of really cool, actually, indie games on there that are only on there. I've never played Undertale, and they have Undertale. Then I'm like, cool, so I can play like Undertale on the bus and on the toilet and everything. But that works for me. I saw a game uh, that got released this week where you you basically just play as a goose and yeah. you, you just be a jerk to people. And I'm like, that I want to play that game. Yeah, that game has blown up and gone all over the place, and I can't believe that it became such a huge meme that I saw everyone playing it. But yeah, I, I've watched some gameplay, and I'm like, what a what a great concept! Be a shithead goose and fuck shit up for people. <laughs> yeah. I, I hope I hope they get DLC so I can ruin some parties that I don't like, that I can just go there and fuck them up as well. <laughs> like, here's a bunch of people who talk in the movie theater. Go go and fuck them up, <laughs> and annoy the shit out of them with your goose powers. <laughs> Uh, Wolfenstein, yes, but only the latter Wolfensteins. I actually still haven't played the newer Wolfensteins, even though I want to. Play up to the most recent one, but don't play the recent one, because the recent one is really crap. So I heard they destinied it up, which is yep. a shame. Yeah. That, I hate to say. Yeah, Super Mario Odyssey. Yeah, I guess legally, now that I'm a Switch owner, I need to officially start playing some Mario games. <laughs> it's, it's it's the law. I've It'll been take playing, away from me. I've been playing Mario Odyssey, and it, it's it's quite fun. It is very it fun. It does. It's like, man, remember remember when, like, colorful mascot-based platformers were gaming's bread and butter? Yeah, that's exactly that, what it is. And it's like, man, thank you, Nintendo, for keeping this shit alive and making me feel like six years old again. It's funny, too. <laughs> ever since I put the Switch together, it's like, okay, now hook this part into your TV if you want to play on a big screen. I'm like, why would I ever want to play on a big screen? I have it here in my <laughs> hand. I can take it ever. This is the thing you have over the PlayStation. I'm not unhooking the PlayStation I, to hook this in. I have found that certain games play better on the on the TV. Like they like it's really? better to sit back with a controller and just play it. Like whereas like games like um what was I playing? I was playing Xenoblade Chronicles the other mm. day. That I feel that that feels better on like the handheld. Whereas right. like Link Link Breath of the Wild um plays better on the TV right yeah I, like i'm still playing it with the little uh side dealies i mm -hmm. have this and i'm debating where it's like do i need to upgrade to a pro controller because it's funny when it comes to the pro controllers for nintendo they're actually like maybe one of the last companies that will still let you buy like uh second party stuff you don't have to just buy from them yeah yeah i've got the pro controller and it's quite good it's quite nice and the battery lasts for fucking years <laughs> Now, do they, do they have a fix for the headphone issue? Because I've noticed, like, it actually has a jack and I can't use my Bluetooth headphones yeah. on it. Well, we'll see. I The headphones I'm wearing at the moment are wireless and they come with a little USB dongle. And I've just plugged that into the oh. thing and it worked perfectly. But, yeah, that's the one thing I don't like. Whereas, like, some controllers, or I think only the more recent ones are starting to come with a headphone jack. Whereas the Pro Controller I got doesn't have a headphone jack. So, if you want to use right. headphones, they've got to be, like, wireless USB ones. That's that's so Nintendo here. Yeah. We have this great console that you can bring around wherever you want. Oh, can I have Bluetooth sound for it? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> we didn't think about that. Also, too, going, you know, from a Sony console, which, you know, very even though it's made by a Japanese company, still very much Americanizes the control scheme. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To go and play this Nintendo thing, I'm like, holy shit, this shit is Japanese. Press this button and do this. For that i'm like oh this is this is new and different and daunting what gets me is the the b and a b and a uh yes. buttons <laughs> how they're they're in my mind they should be reversed uh, yes i keep doing that i feel dyslexic when i'm playing <laughs> this one because i'm like oh, my mind is do but my body isn't in <laughs> new control scheme <laughs> it gets so bad when i play that and then i go and play like playstation 4 i end up pressing like like circle or x like, and I'm like, yeah. no, I need to be pressing this button. Because, <laughs> like, even when I, like, try and uh, pull out, what is it? Uh, when I, like, pull out an Xbox controller, like, it used to be if you wanted to use it for Steam, that's all you could do. Mm -hmm. At least when I did that, the buttons were always roughly in the same place. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tevya asks uh, both of us there, have you seen uh, Rambo Last Blood yet? No, and I don't think I will. It's getting very I... <laughs> lackluster reviews, and the fucking Downton Abbey movie beat it at the box I, office. I, I've seen it, and it, it, yeah, it's pretty crap. Which it's, is such a well, shame. What could have been, like, his, his like, last hurrah, like, his, like, Unforgiven is turned into, like, a, like, a vaguely racist, just, like, action film. It's like, dude, you had your goodbye movie in John Rambo, and it was great. You should have left it at that. Yeah, but yeah, but I did so many good send-offs for Rocky. I want to do this now. <laughs> yeah, he completely misses the point. 
yeah, it's like you, you got to say goodbye to Rambo and people genuinely liked it. Like, what, what is it? That John Rambo is probably the second best Rambo movie after First Blood, which is still the best one. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's that's a real shame. Also, too, come on, really? He's fighting the cartel in 20... That's a lazy villain for a Rambo movie. This is the dude who decimated the Vietnamese, Russian, and Burmese armies all by <laughs> himself. Ooh, the cartel. Scary. Yeah. You know it, what it's... It's it's so crap. <laughs> you know what it should have been? This is my pitch for what Last Blood should have been. It should have been John Rambo needing to go back to Afghanistan and deal with the fact that in Rambo 3, he actually helped the Mujahideen yeah. chase out the Russians and the Mujahideen ended up becoming the Taliban. <laughs> that, that that would have been interesting and, and like kind of politically relevant and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, I got the big knife and I shove it into the Mexican and again too it's like you have to remember it's like but who is this rambo movie really for at the end of the day is yeah. it for the people who want to see you know hey let us let us actually talk about american foreign policy for a minute or is it for people who again like you said i feel like this movie was probably a lot more racist before they cut it down now it's not really <laughs> about anything yeah yeah oh yeah it does feel like it's cut down quite a fair bit mm -hmm. I also heard people say, like, it feels like a Taken sequel that Neeson said it, no to. It literally is a take, like, it, it, like, beat for beat, a Taken sequel. His niece goes missing, he needs to come out of retirement, and apparently remember that he's Rambo again, even though, again, only, like, a few years ago, he was destroying the entire Burmese army. Yeah, that's what I don't understand. Yeah, he be, like, builds, like, under his house, he builds, like, a series of, like, like, Vietnamese spider tunnels. And it gives him like Nam flashbacks. And I'm like, exactly. why? Uh, why? As Amazing Spider Man says, if they wanted it to be super relevant, it should have been ISIS. Yes, it should have been ISIS. And it should, he should have had a moment where he like talks to the ISIS commander. And the ISIS commander's like, dude, I've been fighting war since I was 13. If it wasn't you, it was someone else, man. I, I am you, Rambo. We are a whole <laughs> an army of you, people who are only at war, who only know how to be at war. And, you know, you, your whole choices have made us what we are. Like, again, that's such a fucking easy layoff. <laughs> yeah, but then because it's Cy Slurdy, like, mumbles and cuts him in half with his knife or something. Yeah, stop trying to teach me things. <laughs> Turtle trap, man. Do, do we get to win this time? <laughs> Not this time, Sly. Make, a, make another Creed sequel. <laughs> You can win in that one. But uh, yes, thank you for that, everyone. Thank you for that little, uh, what is it, diversion. I guess from there we can talk about what we read this week. And again, I feel like this is becoming a trend because there's so many freaking books. I read a lot of what came out this week, but didn't read everything I wanted. Yeah, same. I've still got a couple books to do. All right. Uh, where would we like to start, Matt? Uh, well, let's start with Batman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The beach episode part two. Boy, we only got so many issues to end this. Let's really drag it out. Yeah, let's really, like, you know, yeah, we, we're going to got six issues left and we're going to spend two of them. Maybe three, if maybe next next issue is the same. Uh, maybe two or three issues on a beach while everyone, like, dies around them and stuff like Just that. Just literally, literally uh figurative figuratively and literally jerking off the whole time yeah. oh yeah, yeah yeah you know all this stuff's happening and but there, there's a great part there where like they're they're at the bar and like the you can see the panels that say like the radio is like oh gotham is in shambles mm. and bruce is just sitting there having a drink like doesn't even give a fuck it does not even register with him on an emotional no. level. Oh, oh, the president has made it illegal. Oh, Captain Adam's been beaten up. Oh, he might be dead. And then, like, Catwoman punches a guy for shit-talking Gotham, and Batman's mm -hmm. like, that makes me so fucking horny how you punch that guy. Let's go bang. <laughs> yes, I said I was going to try and be a better person now, but I'm still not going to deal with any of my other issues. <laughs> Boo, boo. Also, too, they really start messing with the timeline to say that these two issues actually take place before the events of Batman 77. So before Damien goes in and before Alfred gets killed, Batman says, oh, I talked to Alfred. He's fine. I gave the go ahead to let uh, Damien go in. And I'm like, uh, so that <laughs> means it's all your fault. Yeah, you've been like commanding all this. Like, like the whole deal is that like you can't be Batman yet. You're doing like Batman things. I, yeah. I don't understand. <laughs> also, if you gave Damien the go-ahead, then why did he lie to Tim? Yeah, yeah. Why was he getting angry? Why, what was the point of that? That whole scene with them together where he wanted to be brash and headstrong and head in because he could deal with them and then get Clarion's wand and yeah. possibly sell his soul. 
Way, way to deflate the shit out of that. Furthermore, the president said entering Gotham as a superhero was illegal, so literally Batman told his son to break a presidential order. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I don't... That's, also, how can, that's... The, how can this issue be set before the, the last issue? Because this issue ends with them, like, basically coming to terms with everything, whereas the ne- which the last issue, which would take place after that, says they didn't. <laughs> Again, to actually, Tevia brings up a good point. How could he have given Damien the go-ahead? Yeah, exactly. He has none of yeah. his Batman gear, or at least he didn't. He magically gets it back when they start training. Yeah, yeah, and then that that means that they know he's alive. So, like, why aren't they like pulling back and regrouping and like sort yeah. and like, okay, Batman's alive. It's all good. We'll we'll sort this all out. We'll just regroup. <laughs> I feel like some of this dialogue had to have been put in later after people got all pissed mm-hmm. off about Alfred's death. So it's like, no, 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 no. He, he told him it was fine. Alfred told him he was safe. But he's clearly not, though, no. unless you lied about that, in which case, oh, you had that big moment for nothing. Alfred's fine. Although I don't think he's fine because the solicitations seek to imply that he did indeed die, which again means that this was all Batman's fault. Yeah. And and again, like if batman has the 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 resources and reach to like get get a hold of like damien and sort that out he would know what's been going on in gotham uh so he would know that like alfred is dead and everything so gonna see any of that probably not you know you can see this issue where he finds out alfred is dead and it like breaks him because it was his fault and everything it's it's so it's like either Batman is really bad at his job and caused all this bad shit to happen, the death of Alfred, the capture of Damien, or none of that actually happened, in which case way to undercut all of the drama that you tried to yeah. build. None of it actually mattered because no one was actually in danger. Mm-hmm. Oh boy, I love these two options. Yeah, yeah. And again, it's six issues, you decide to spend a bunch of shit on the boat and there, there was a there was a line where i'm like fuck off this that this is uh, where catwoman goes like because they the, the whole thing is built around them they they're at the island because magpie is making a deal there with some venom uh, which, which is they never explain. never mention at all or anything well, why is she moving venom if bane is in control of the city and he's not taking the venom anymore is she selling it for bane or because she's a thief did she steal the venom and why is it here on this very specific island are they do oh that's right none of it matters because the, we just need them to the, have a fight with magpie the one line that that really got me was i think it was from catwoman where she says like if we take the venom we can stop bane for good i'm like how what a how? Absolute, absolute what a vague thing to say uh are you cutting him off from his supply he already took over the city so he doesn't need it to hulk up or anything are you gonna take it yourself to get really strong and fight <laughs> that's a terrible idea I, are you gonna try and get bane back on the smack yeah, are, are you gonna poison it and heroes? taint it or something like what are you going to like why what, what why why are you doing this <laughs> All of these sound like terrible ideas, and I'm sure to, uh, they're just things. They're like you're, you're overthinking it. Don't think about it. I'm not thinking about it. Oh, that I got that. Com- I got like a four paragraph comment from that, like saying it's like this all makes sense. You'll you'll see. You king haters will see. I'm like, no, we won't. No, we won't. And the perfect and the perfect example of how we won't see. We finally get the answer to the burning question that was on King's mind and no one else. Oh, did they meet on me. a boat or did they meet on a street? The answer is. It doesn't matter, because I really only met you now, because I love you this oh, much. Why, why Why was King so obsessed with, with such a little thing that was in the... Like, like yeah, it was fun at the start. That was like a flirty thing they were doing. It was like, did we meet on the street? Did we meet in the boat? It's like, ah, it's funny, because you reference these I, two things. I can answer this, Matt. He answered this on Twitter. Oh, fuck. Are you ready for this, oh, Matt? God. I'm glad you're sitting down because you might not be ready for this. <laughs> I might have to like just fall out of my chair or something. You m- make sure there's nothing around you that you can break because reasonably you might want to break something when you hear this. So the reason they keep talking about, oh, when did we first meet? When was our first date? Was it was it on a boat or was it on the street? The reason this keeps coming back, Matt is because apparently Tom King, in his real life with his wife of 19 years, they cannot agree where they first met, actually. Again with the fucking... God damn it. (laughs) 
because everything is actually about Tom King. He yeah. can only write from his own very limited perspective. So for everyone who is ever wondering, oh, what does this mean about continuity? What does this mean? You know, uh, is this related to Doomsday Clock? Oh, you know, is he commenting on how canon is always in flux in the comic book universe? How can two people fall in love when they don't know what their lives will be tomorrow? The answer is none of it mattered. None of it was <laughs> ever about Batman. It was always about Tom King. And that's this entire series in a nutshell. <laughs> oh, fuck me just just mm. and also too when i read that i'm like would someone please take tom king's twitter away because the more he talks about this the more i hate it that's like last week when, when when he said we'd get a definitive answer he said yes it was the boat and then followed up by saying actually it wasn't <laughs> and this this also too as uh green ninja reminds me remember when tom king also said on twitter that his book doesn't need explaining and he's not gonna spend time that's explaining right it for people the dick <laughs> Well, well, my man, you've been spending a lot of time explaining it, so you know. It's always good when, when, when an issue does come out of his book because you know, like that morning, like he's out on Twitter explaining shit, and I'm like, ah, well, you wouldn't need to explain shit if you just explained it in the comic. <laughs> Look, I just write vague things, and then the artist draws the pretty pictures on it. So that's <laughs> what, what. What do you want from me? <laughs> the the art tells the story, right? I'm just I'm just here. <laughs> yeah yeah this, the artist does everything that's why i'm working with the best artists right they're doing everything yeah. i just like give them random one letter words or something and that man that man gets to go on to hollywood <laughs> oh god also not not to labor the point further but seriously i had to ask myself when i finished this one i'm like man how did Tom King ever get the reputation of being like this really deep, really insightful yeah. adult writer when everything in his Batman run and uh, Heroes in Crisis as well has been just this like after school playground moralizing where it's just like a child it, says these things. I, I think it stems it, it really started with like the Mr. Miracle thing. And I think it stems from that, 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 that those two words that dark side is because you see mm. that fucking thing everywhere and like people don't seem to understand what it actually means and are just saying like it gets referenced in comics all the time it's like oh is 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 this what dark side's going to become now is is he just going to be these two words and is that all he's going to be yeah and people because people think it's deep and meaningful yeah so insane there are you going to read the adam strange series from him honestly at this point i don't know at this point his batman has burnt me out so thoroughly that even something that's probably going to be good because it plays to his strengths i probably just i, I yeah it's soured me too much like give it a year and i might come to it like i like adam strange but yeah i'm not like rushing out to like get this book from him yeah exactly and i'm sure it'll be good because again I never want people to think I don't think he's a talented writer or he's a hack. He's proven that he can actually write quite mm -hmm. well when all the elements are in order for him. Well, yeah, and certain characters like his Superman book. Yeah. Like, his, yeah, his, like, he, like he writes it competently with like full sentences and like structure. Where is all of that in his Batman book? It really doesn't feel like it's the same person, does it? No, it's not. See, it's actually a special CIA a program because he was in the cia mad uh there's actually two tom kings they cloned each other and that's how he's able to keep up with all these books it's just one of the clones came out kind of poorly formed <laughs> could only make one 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 word sentences like bat and cat yeah bat cat did you keep ring no pond at all me sad now <laughs> me suicide that's that's the me, me all suicide all the time that's the twist we find out this entire story arc actually took place in bizarro world <laughs> that's why everything was wrong and messed up it was actually just bizarro world <laughs> god i cannot wait for tynan to take over this book and how he will address this even if he addresses it at all because i think a lot of people are already prepared to be like and we're just sweeping that under the rug yeah oh i imagine a lot of it's going to be swept under the rug like pretty quickly never happened green ninja saying i never understood that in his mr miracle run it's funny too you know i actually think the art was a little bit better in his mr miracle run because it was actually like yeah art told the story there mm -hmm. especially oh, in yeah. that first issue well, oh, when yeah. the colors kept changing from yeah page and the to glitches page. and stuff like that told the story and actually really informed it really damn well 
To which, again, it's like, you know, am I liking the writing here or am I liking the art on this one for telling the story? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, all right, what else do we have after Batman this week? Uh, ba -dum -ba -dum -dum. Ooh, I read uh, Black Panther and the Agents of Wakanda. Ooh, tell us about that. I got to read this one early, actually. Jim Zub was nice enough to send me an early copy, oh, which nice. is rare because they never send early copies of Marvel books ever. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, this this one really wastes no time getting started. It's the agents of Wakanda. The Avengers set them up to be a replacement for the agents mm -hmm. of S.H.I.E.L.D. to do like the back uh, end of their operation so yep. they could do the more bigger superhero stuff. Uh, we see Janet and uh, her new partner, the man wolf, John Jameson Jr. Nice. And uh, they don't like each other. They've got like a buddy cop thing going on where Janet's like, ah, oh, you're a loose cannon, man wolf. What with your being a werewolf? <laughs> And he's like, ah, I can't help it, Janet. <laughs> I can't <laughs> help being a werewolf. <laughs> it's funny, too, that, like, she's a founding Avenger and she's here on this team lending them, you know, like, more credence and street cred. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we get to meet a bunch of different members of the team. Man, Fat Cobra is my new favorite. Like, this is the new breakout character of the year, Fat Cobra. Yeah. Yeah, he's one of the living weapons, so he can do everything Iron Fist can do. Ooh. Only he's got sick-ass kanji tattoos is big and fat and super horny oh <laughs> perfect finally a character i can relate to <laughs> i see so much of myself in this fat cobra <laughs> and uh yeah it's it's just like a total team of misfits and outsiders and underdogs and black panther comes to them it's like look so i got this really important new mission for you and i'm actually going to come along with you and they all get freaked out by the Mm -hmm. but he's our boss he's coming on the mission is this is this gonna be dangerous is this over our head and black panther is coming <laughs> yeah oh shit and the boss is coming that, yeah i love that that freaks them out he's like yeah so you know i've been tracking this weird energy signature in this small uh, american town we got to go check it out when they get there the whole town is overrun by monsters so they got to fight off the monsters but they're very special monsters because they're monsters that know your deepest darkest fear and inadequacy Ooh, cool and they'll just shout it at you like a YouTube comment section. Like, oh, Janet, <laughs> Janet, you're old. You're over the hill. Oh, you're a failure. You can't do it anymore. Oh, Okoye, you were put in charge of this new team and everything. Oh, but you're no Phil Coulson, though. Oh, you suck. You're bad. Bat Cobra, <laughs> your name is Bat Cobra. <laughs> you suck. You're blowing it. And we eventually find out that these monsters are seemingly in some way related to the returned century. Oh, okay. Yes, but the new Sentry, who we saw at the end of that Jeff Lemire book, who's yeah, both yeah. the good and bad sides fused together. Yeah, the Void Sentry. Ooh, I hope he comes back. Yeah. He Can he come back and just, like, rip Carnage in half? Bet they might imply that he might be a member of this team moving forward, which Ooh, would be hilarious. That'd be cool. I love it, and I love that Fat Cobra is the one who finds him, and he's like, oh, fuck me, the sensory. This is our first mission, man. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on, that, that, that's unfair. We're already playing on easy. Come on. <laughs> yeah, this is above our pay grade. Come on, man. Really, you're throwing the sensory at us? I do love that that's just like Jim Zub in a nutshell, where it's like, no, they might be the auxiliary team, but they will not be fighting auxiliary threats. <laughs> <laughs> Also, the chat's saying I might be glitching a little myself. Oh, you don't sound like you're glitching to me. No, you sound fine to me, too. This is the chat. Set. Marvel Knight said it, and I believe what Marvel Knight says because he's our official, <laughs> unofficial audio What guy. he says is true. Again, I, I trust him. He hasn't stirred me wrong yet. No, oh, Tevia. We, we got green connections. So. That's good. Uh, no, Tevia, the Sentry isn't insane anymore. He fused his good and bad halves, and now he's mm -hmm. sane. Yeah, yeah, he's sane and and very very fucking dangerous yes exactly and we don't know if he's a good guy or a bad guy because the heroes treated him really bad at the end of that yeah. linear run and he basically pulled a dr manhattan and said fuck you all i'm leaving earth yeah so we don't know where he's gone no or why what if he back? came back and like like the null symbiote is on him oh shit that'd be fucked up but cool <laughs> There's a lot of places they could go. But yeah, that book is a really good team book. If you love underdogs, if you love your astonishing X-Men and your secret sixes and your superior foes, you'll like this because it is kind of, uh, what is it, uh, filling that same role. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that sounds cool. 
Yeah, I, I like this one. And I know it's going to be a hard sell to get people to pick up this book because it's like mm, a spinoff of a bigger team mm-hmm. starring Black Panther. Mm, I don't know. But no, seriously, you'll like this one. I think I think it's sadly destined to be a cult favorite, but I'm definitely wanting to take this ride. And apparently the arcs are all going to be short, too. Oh, that's cool. They're going to be like two issue arcs. So there you go. Nice. All right. Uh, what else did you have going on, Matt? Uh, I had Flash Forward issue one. Oh, tell me all about it, because as I've mentioned before, I refuse to read anything Scott Lobdell related. <laughs> so thank you for taking this bullet for me. So this is the, the this is a band aid fix. This is this oh, is ba- the band aid fix for Heroes in Crisis. Uh, a ham fisted band aid fix at uh, that. Uh, oh, so. We learn from Tempest, who is a character created in the New Age of Heroes. He's basically a celestial. Um, even looks kind of like one. Uh, he, Boy, does he! He we find we find out that that um, the some anomaly has happened where the dark universes aren't dying, and mm-hmm. because of that, they're overflowing from the dark multiverse into the, the proper multiverse and are starting to affect infect healthy worlds and stuff. Wow, uh, that's some wishful thinking, the dark multiverse sticking around yeah. and actually spilling on over to the main universe. No, nah, I'm pretty sure they all died on their own. <laughs> yeah, so they, they need, they so someone is needed uh, to help fix this, and that person is Wally West, who has been incarcerated in uh, Blackgate Prison. Uh, for, why, why Blackgate yeah, and not Bell Rap? Well, apparently, they say in the book that Black, the Blackgate is like, he's temporarily staying them like well, why not just put him in a hall of justice holding cell until you need to put him somewhere else but it's not just that but like his identity has been revealed uh so everyone what? knows who he is it, like because he fuck superhero community <laughs> he's he's in this he's in this prison with like people he put there like girder and tar pit and murmur and all of that uh so they this obviously is, this is how the superheroes treat their yeah. friend who had a mental yeah. breakdown by outing his secret identity yeah. and putting him in a fucking prison with people yeah. who ate a black him. gate prison at, uh, at that yeah so they they you try and the kill worst him worst prison in the world uh, like double down tries to kill him and murmur saves him not because murmur like wants to be his friend but momo just wants him to suffer even more just by being alive in the prison uh uh, they they try and they try and portray it as like wally is like upset with with everything he's done like we still fucking did it mate you still fucking murdered all those people and then tried to frame people and cover it all up you're completely responsible for all of this it's the cover up that's the real problem like he can be like oh i wasn't in my right mind yeah but you covered it up though that's the real thing (laughs) you need to be sorry for uh he he gets uh he meets with linda park um uh who who isn't his wife or anything anymore even though i'm fairly certain she like touched him and like got memories back i think I can't remember. I can't fucking remember. Uh, but yeah, she's there like t- as just a reporter trying to ask questions and he gets like real triggered and like leaves because like he can't bear to see her. Um, because just, just, just one second as the chat brings up, this is so perfect. Why are flash villains like Tar Pit and Girder and Blackgate Penitentiary yeah. in Gotham? <laughs> yeah. Well, I can, I could see that like, it's not referenced, but I could see because Iron Heist doesn't exist anymore. Trickster blew it up um oh. but but in saying that like this book doesn't reference that so i'm just going to assume scott lovedale didn't know that and just said, oh we did that gate prison and um Damn, but yes please continue yeah so black uh, so uh he's in this prison he's wearing like the control dampening collars and stuff uh black uh girder and tar pit attack him they break his collar he he just he like wrecks them uh and then tempest comes for him and says oh we need your help come be my herald and help the universe uh he uh wally says fuck off i i don't want anything to do with that uh he's he's come for he's come for wally because apparently wally is the fastest man in the multiverse Mm-hmm. Uh, for, suddenly you know all of a sudden uh, and there's a great line as well where 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 you say you need to be you need to do this we need someone who can travel like multiverses and and well it's like i can't do that i've never traveled multiverses and i'm like well except for the time you you did you know yeah well, uh, do, the, do you remember you that <laughs> you literally came from another universe into this rebirth universe 
Yeah, but then we see. I've come down with a bad case of plot stupidity. So <laughs> uh, he gets his costume and is forced to go on this thing, and he gets sent to Earth twenty eight, where he meets with the Calvin Ellis President Superman. Oh, and that yeah. and he's got to help him somehow. But yeah, it's all it's right. all hand fisted. Oh yeah, I completely fucking forgot, and no wonder I did because it was shit. Um, there, there's like <laughs> this weird interlude two-page interlude in the book with Tarkle, the the Thanagarian treasure hunter. Uh, oh, yeah, you posted these on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, the fucking font on it fucking did my head in reading that. Um, but, yeah, he, he goes after uh, Metron's Mobius chair, and he finds it, and he's, oh, the dialogue on it was so shit. And it's like the whole dialogue of the whole book, but he was basically talking to himself. He's like, this is the Mobius chair. Only the strongest of minds can sit in it. People who sit in it who don't have strong minds die. I'm going to sit in it. And then he dies. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, the that, dialogue is so ham-fisted. That sounds like a Scott Lobdell book. Is oh, what yeah, that it, it totally like. is. It totally is a Scott Lobdell book. To which the chat also said, why didn't they just get Joshua Williamson to try and fix exactly. it? Exactly. Probably, probably because he was offended that he needed to fix it in the first place after Flash War and everything else he did. That they're just like, hey, you did great work, Josh. But King wants to do something over here and Dio has an axe to grind. So we're just going to tear, <laughs> tear that from tear you. Tear that from me. <laughs> Oh, no, we got it covered in feces. Well, you can have it back, Josh. No, I don't want it. <laughs> hey, Scott, you love feces. Here you go. <laughs> yeah, do you want to grope these feces? They uh, won't fight I back. Sure, <laughs> I sure do. Check out my Kickstarter with the wife beater. <laughs> That's true, but yes, moving yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's so ham-fisted. I'm going to keep reading it because it's only like, what, six issues or something? And I just, I just want to see like how much more ham-fisted it can get. Again, we're we have to do a series now because we messed up so bad <laughs> and made people so angry that we put a D plus squad to try and fix it. Well, apparently, as well, like that Harley Ivy book as well, like is a band aid fix for for the stuff oh, in, in Heroes in Crisis. Again, it's like these two books are just like trying to fix what what King has done. <laughs> And we gave that man an Eisner the same day he had to admit, yep, yeah, people hated Heroes in Crisis, but I did exactly what I wanted. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, what Amazing. he wanted. What he wanted. Amazing. Just good times. Good times. But you know what actually was good times, Matt? Uh, House of X issue number five. Oh, this is fucking awesome. Man, I really didn't think that a whole issue devoted to the mechanics of how you can resurrect the X-Men endlessly would be fascinating. But boy, howdy, was this fascinating. Yeah. To, to, talk about, like, we talk about a writer like King who doesn't, like, explain everything. Then we've got Hickman who actually explains everything perfectly. In detail. Yeah, yeah. And makes, like, use of characters who uh, otherwise, are, like, before this were, like, joke characters, like, gold balls and stuff. And actually, no, this guy is actually important. So important, he's technically now, like, a mutant god odd yeah a mutant celebrity it, it's great too because like literally magneto and polaris are hanging out in this book and it's like hey fans i bet if you had a nerdy question don't worry because we thought of it <laughs> yeah we, we we've got lorna basically being the audience asking all these questions like well how do the shells of the human of the mutants clones like get the memories back and all this well all this let stuff. me tell you lorna <laughs> <laughs> And also read these appendices that will also tell you. And also, hey, here's potential spinoff books here as well with these ideas we've come up with. Yeah. Just, man, the fact that Hickman did this and used two very much maligned Bendis characters to do it <laughs> is just a testament to how this man can just spin gold every time. Yeah, spin gold from, like, nothing. It's so damn good. Like, Gold Ball, stupid character, and just in a couple lines where it's like, well, yeah, so it turns out the Gold Balls aren't actually made of gold at all. They're made of human protein. Gross. But we can use it to make artificial wombs. Oh, and Proteus is here, too, to warp reality, and Tempest is here to move time around, and Elixir to breathe life into it. And, yeah, it works just like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I do like the fact that Gold Balls, all, all this time, he's he's basically been throwing eggs at people. <laughs> yep, this whole time he's been throwing human protein eggs at people <laughs> gross <laughs> eat my fleshy eggs <laughs> but yeah uh, also too as the chat is saying they finally uh mentioned where proteus is yes moira's son proteus 
who they even have an answer for that. It's like, but wait, isn't the whole point of Proteus that he's driven crazy because he's so powerful that just using his power burns out his body? Yes, but because we're cloning blank mutant bodies, basically blank VHS <laughs> for tape and stuff, Proteus can just hop into a new body. And wait a minute, Proteus's bodies that he hop into, they're modeled after Xavier's body? Mm. So you've got... So you've got a bunch of spare Xavier bodies just sitting around, huh? Mm. Yeah. What's up with that? that... Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. But well, what really got me was the panel where like Xavier like gives um, Scott back his memory because we learned that Cerebro isn't just for finding mutants. He like it's like a data bank. He stores like yes. mutants, like minds and essences in it. And what was really cool, and it's probably nothing, but like when when he goes to activate the helmet, Magneto puts his helmet on. And like, yes, ooh, yes, what's yes. ooh? What is that? Is that like Magneto like saying, "Don't copy my mind, Xavier"? Uh, there's only one of me. That's a great shot. And also, too, the same thing too. When Scott like comes out of the flesh sack and is born anew, and like Xavier's looking at him and talking about how like all is forgiven. That's the exact same shot, but shown in reverse of, yeah, of, of uh, the first what is issue. it? Avenge. Of, of the first issue and also of Avengers versus X-Men when Scott killed Xavier and he's looking over his charred body, but now it's Xavier standing oh, over him as he is cool. born anew. Oh, that's and awesome. And I'm like, mm, Hickman, he pays attention to everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and also, like, again, I still get more, like, sinister vibes from this. Very culty, this oh, issue God. as well. Like, I compared oh, them yeah. to, like, Branch Davidians. People got mad at me for that. Oh, yeah. um, Oh, even though that's exactly what, like, literally yeah. Storm's next words could have been, and now we're all going to drink the Kool-Aid. Yeah, yeah, they, they're, like, they're celebrating, like, look look what Jesus did. Look what Jesus did. We brought that's back these people. <laughs> literally, we have literally stolen fire from the gods. We have made death our, our bitch. We have an endless supply of suicide soldiers. We are the most powerful beings in the universe now. Look what mutant Jesus did. Yeah. All she all she was lacking is like holding two rattlesnakes up in her hand and like dance speaking yeah. in tongues and whatnot. Speaking in that mutant <laughs> language. Exactly. I got a fun about that. Oh, they'll only bite you if you're sinful. <laughs> are you sinful? Everyone didn't think so. <laughs> But no, it's beautiful and it's awesome because on one hand, you're like, fuck yeah, mutants, you do that. Yeah, You've been yeah. around for so long. It's about time, you know, you finally start winning. And then in the back of your mind, too, you're like, this is really scary, though. This is yeah. way too much power for any person to hold. And we're 90% sure Xavier is someone evil under the mask. Personally, I think it's Mr. Sinister who jumped into his body. And if he takes it off, there's a dime in there. Ooh, that's cool. That's my theory, but yeah. And then they eventually become their own country too because uh, Emma Frost is able to manipulate the minds of the last couple Again, of more voters. sinister shit that like a cult would, this is like something Scientology would do, like pay off the fucking like senators or something to allow them to build like a new fucking uh, like alien mosque or something in, in their city or something, you know? that Yeah, she, she like manipulates the Russian leaders so that they do vote for the thing. It's like, Jesus Christ, that's like toeing the line there. <laughs> And it's wonderful, too, that Emma does it and not Xavier. Yeah. And Xavier's like, oh, I could have done that. Oh, but I wouldn't want to, though. Oh, I would do terrible things to my morality. <laughs> but I'm glad you did it, Emma. You you really took one for the cause on this one. I'm really happy. And I'm like, how does Emma know Xavier didn't use his mind powers to make her do it? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Maybe he's the one, like, manipulating all of this. And it, it, it is kind of implied that he might be as well. Yes, like, because as they say, we make you perfect pod children the same age, your same powers, but we could also do other stuff when we bring you back. You don't know what you were doing. Yeah, we could yeah. make you stronger. We could make you younger. We could maybe even return the powers of people who have been depowered through this process. Yeah, there's lots of interesting and, like, really sinister things they can do with this like literally just in a couple pages i'm like oh well that's your next three to four years of stories right there because they say yeah you know we haven't tried yet putting someone's mind in someone else's body it would probably work also <laughs> too you know this is comic books and sometimes dead people aren't really dead they're just missing or trapped in ice or something boy we'll have to be really careful to make sure we don't have doubles running around because we won't be able to know who the real <laughs> one is <laughs> That's a, ooh, that's a that's a big problem if we have doubles. <laughs> 
just oh, just so many great ideas that they could run with there. It's just oh, just I, I love everything about it. It's so interesting and so fascinating. And again, as we mentioned, the morality of it is really complicated too, because it's like, well, you guys are kind of acting like a scary cult, but also you're the X Men, and I like you, and because of the whole you know <laughs> civil rights message, I want you to have your own country and your own laws and your own language that can thrive. But also you're scaring me, but maybe that's the point because like any group that's been put down and shat upon for years by those in power, mm. you're hoping that once they get into power, they won't treat everyone else as badly as they were treated. Yeah, I, I, I like that Hickman isn't like, he isn't choosing a side on that either. Like he's portraying no. them as as sinister, but also like this is like a really great moment for the x-men because they have their own country they have their own people they're being celebrated and everything and as he's, he's doing both of them at the same time and it's it's working Fair. so well he, again he's walking that line so perfectly because it's like the x-men got everything they ever wanted and they didn't hurt anybody physically yet yeah we'll see yeah. There's, yeah. there's that big question mark of like, yeah. And Magneto nails it so perfectly too when he talks about mankind's hunter-gatherer roots where it's like, you know, it used to be man always lived on the run, afraid of nature, afraid of each other, but then they built cities and society. But they never got rid of that fear. They just kept shifting it around mm -hmm. to everyone. And, you know, we mutants, now that we have everything we've ever wanted, we're going to be different. You know, we're going to concentrate on art and literature and, you know, all this other sophisticated endeavors. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, but will you, though? But will you really, <laughs> yeah. though? Well, won't that dream might get, like, sullied a little bit. You'll get too much power or something and it'll go to your heads because mm -hmm. it's like yes the mutants you are indeed the next stage of human evolution but you got a lot of us in you too we'll see oh yeah 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 they, they they were more human than they like to believe well in fact we know because we've seen the multiple futures and in multiple futures yes all this shit does come crashing down around them <laughs> yeah yeah it's going to be interesting to see how that works or especially now where they've effectively changed the future in a way yeah. where it was like nimrod isn't come or come when it's supposed to yeah, or they've, yeah. Although it could be like like a Terminator thing where they've merely postponed it. Nimrod is inevitable. Yeah. <laughs> you only postpone Judgment Day. But yeah, that book continues to be awesome. I'm, I've am i never been more hopeful for the direction of this book where it's like, all right, what else you got? Because I'm, I'm all about it. Yeah, I, I can't wait to see what like the, the once the series ends, all like the X-Men, Uncanny X-Men, all those books do. <laughs> And I definitely want to read all of them. And then at the same time, too, it's like, oh, that's a lot of X-Men books <laughs> to cover. Okay, I'm definitely going to read the Hickman ones, but also Excalibur and also maybe X-Force. <laughs> okay, I'll read them all. Shit. I, I can't do videos on all of them, but I'll definitely try and read all of them. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's good shit. It's really, really good shit. Yeah, it is. Uh, what else did you want to talk about, Matt? Oh, well, speaking of good shit, we had Justice League issue 32. We did Justice League mixing it up in the past and the future. Yeah, this is this this was so damn awesome issue. So we got um we got like obviously the team of JSA and John Stewart and and uh, Barry fighting in Pearl Harbor. Yes, <laughs> like helping to everyone. Which I'm, I'm really glad the villains asked the question. Hey, should we keep messing with time like this, or are we gonna ruin <laughs> everything? And Luther's like, "No, it's fine. Perpetua said it'd be fine. Fuck up whatever you want. It's cool." Yeah, she she's she's got hyper time in the editing bay, and and Literally. she she can add and subtract what she wants. <laughs> Because in the back of my mind, I'm like, oh, this is cool that the Justice League are helping out at, like, you know, one of the darkest days in American history. And I'm like, but what if those people were supposed to die, though? Aren't you messing yeah. with time? So it's fine. Perpetua said it's fine. <laughs> yeah, it, it brings out a lot of different questions. And it also brings out questions like, well, now that that's happened, like, to right time, does that mean the team have to let Pearl Harbor happen? Again, this is the problem with using a real bit of history where it's like, oh no, and now the JSA has to let Pearl Harbor happen. <laughs> oh god. Uh but yeah, they they're there to get like the piece of totality which is on like a research ship uh called the Hail Mary, which is fun cuz this plan is the Hail Mary. <laughs> Hilarious. Uh meanwhile in the future, the the Trinity are fighting with the Justice Legion A who that fight was pretty short because Wonder Woman uses her really whip on, on our man and our man's like power allows like the the control over Brainiac to break which I'm fine with that cuz everyone keeps forgetting Diana has that power it's like yeah. dude I can break all brain control with this 
Yeah, I'm just make sure I'm, I don't get brain controlled first. Yeah, I'm glad it happened, which means we got like a cool team up with them. Uh, with yeah. them fighting the 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 uh, the Bra Brainiac robots as Brainiac turns into future Zen Brainiac and Brainiac one million. <laughs> which it's funny, people said, "Hey, he looks kind of like he did in Convergence." Yes, and his plot to steal different timelines and put them under glass is also literally his plan from Convergence. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's shocking. I'm like, is it's not a reference thing, Convergence here, but actually making it better because it's just a background thing. <laughs> um aquaman shows up uh to help the jsa which is really cool he gets his han solo moment of like i'm here yeah yeah i'm here with the kraken and we've got to save That's everyone really. twitch again you want to talk about that changing history i'm like well if aquaman reveals himself to the world here in world war ii now won't this affect the history of atlantis <laughs> uh, you could just say yeah it's a it's an ancestor <laughs> the answer is perpetua said don't think about it <laughs> i have it in the editing bay okay <laughs> yeah i'm fixing it yeah, i'm cutting and i was cutting and chopping and doing everything i need to fix history it's mine <laughs> um yeah so like uh lex and perpetua have been heading to the um to the fire edge of the the multiverse where the anti-monitor is and i love that perpetua thinks that when she arrives there her son is just gonna welcome her with open arms and they get there and anti-monitor's like fuck off <laughs> you know fuck you and doom <laughs> i've chosen the side of justice and his reasoning for choosing justice is amazing it basically boils down to screw you mom i'm hanging out with yeah, the justice league now. you hurt me but you also hurt the multiverse which is what we were made to create and look after so yeah i'm just gonna fuck you up with my giant gun <laughs> Yeah, I, I love that the whole anti-monitor Perpetua and her children thing is just like this dysfunctional family soap opera. Yeah, yeah no better than like the humans they made. <laughs> Literally. And I'm like, that's actually perfect, though. It's like, why is humanity so messed up? Look at the people who created us. <laughs> yeah, look at our parents. <laughs> exactly. We are we are shoddy workmanship because <laughs> of their shoddy workmanship. <laughs> and we're just we're all just snowballing that commandy had a great bit too this issue where he's like is this is this the future are there any yeah. good futures yeah and i like wonder woman's like no the, the the humans aren't just about like fighting or anything we're also about like compassion and hope and truth mm -hmm. and all of that i like that i thought that was pretty cool it's great that wonder woman says that too to kind of like make him feel better because i'm like yeah if you're commandy you've only seen shitty possible futures can yeah. can commandy come to like modern day and like go to like shake shack or something and be <laughs> like yo here's like here's like earth when it was good dude yeah he, he have some big belly burger yeah man hey can we do like some wendy's five for five for uh freaking commandy and can we like set him up with a netflix account or something <laughs> i think he's earned it like he can bring that shit back to earth and be like yo tiger people look what i got <laughs> look at this cool shit i got from the present <laughs> i see why they call it the present <laughs> Because it's presence to me. But yeah, Justice League continues to be great. It's one of the few undeniably great things going on yeah, in DC. Yeah, it's so good. And again, it gives me hope for like the Batman book. Because again, this is like co-written by James Tynan. So yes. it's going to be get damn good. I, I wonder if Funny Batman will carry over. Because that seems to I be a thing. I hope so. Tonight. I like Funny seems, Batman. It's a thing that like they're very subtly trying to do it. Tynan and Snyder in this book where it's like, okay, we've written really serious Batman stories. How do we make this different? Okay, he's really dry and a cut up in this book is yeah. what he is. Yeah. He makes like little jokes and people are like, did he just make a joke? Yeah, yeah. Uh, under his breath all the time and it's so good. Yeah, I'm not totally humorous. Yeah. Whoa, Bat Whoa, Batman, did you see Superman and Wonder Woman beating up those robots? Isn't that cool? It'd be cooler if I was there. It's yeah, or, also, since he's writing that, we could probably get Jaro in that series. Oh, that'd be funny. Yeah. Hey, kids, I adopted this alien starfish. He's your new brother now. <laughs> Accept him or die. <laughs> It's like, oh, Master Bruce, you can't keep bringing them all back. You're going to put them next to the cow and the two dogs that I have. <laughs> yeah, I remember how Ace and Titus only show up sometimes, and yeah. the bat cow also only sometimes. Mm -hmm. Boy, I hope someone's feeding those super dogs, <laughs> them bat dogs. Well, no one can now. Ra Ra Alfred's dead. Oh, no. Who's going to feed the bat zoo now? <laughs> <laughs> you know Bruce is going to forget. <laughs> Hey, good kids, I can be, oh, nope, all my sidekicks have run away or forget who they are. <laughs> Duke, feed the, ah, crap, I sent him off to the outsider so he wouldn't bother me anymore, <laughs> shit. Cassandra, nope, just got rid of yep, you too. Uh, she's mm. gone. Yep. <laughs> this is why I gotta keep at least one kid around to feed the zoo. 
That's that's why Batman keeps picking up sidekicks. It's not to like fill a hole inside. It's, of it's stuff. to look it's after just, the zoo. <laughs> it's free labor, is what it really boils down to. <laughs> Alfred's <laughs> getting old; he can't do it all on his own. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was Justice League. Justice League continues to be cool shit. Awesome. Uh, what else was there? Oh, I read a Rick and Morty book this week. Oh, nice. Tell me how about that was. Uh, yeah, this is the sequel to Rick and Morty vs. D&D. This is Rick and Morty vs. D&D 2 Painscape, which, yes, is a reference to Planescape. <laughs> nice. Uh, the joke is is that it takes place exactly at the end of the previous one where the Smith family comes together by playing tabletop RPGs. Mm -hmm. But they're not the only one, though. Apparently their love has spread to everyone else on Earth, and now the world is just D&D &D world. Oh, no. <laughs> Where, like, D&D streams get, like, big corporate sponsorships and there's dice stores on every corner. <laughs> That's awesome. And everyone's really happy about this except for Rick, naturally, because Rick course. hates everyone else's happiness. He's like, this is fucking bullshit. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. This has to be sinister. <laughs> and indeed it is. There's an actual D&D plague uh, infecting the world and it's turning people's cells into little D20s. Oh, nice. <laughs> And Rick's like, well, Marty, you and me got to go on an adventure to find the dimension where this plague is coming from. And the dimension they go to is a dimension based on a campaign for Rick's very first Dungeons & Dragons game. Because as we found out in the first part of this story, Rick actually likes Dungeons & Dragons, but he's a really shitty fan who hates it when people don't play his way. Uh, is he, he's one of those people where he's like, he he's, has to be the like the OPest uh, of the OP. Yeah. <laughs> He only likes combat. He only yeah. picks the wizard because they have the most subclasses. He's a huge dick about it. Yeah. And this world is unfinished. And the reason it's unfinished is because it's being kept alive by Sorcerer Rick and <laughs> his master, Bard Rick. <laughs> nice. Who are, who are evil fantasy versions of him. The, the Bard Rick one is especially hilarious because in the first part of this story, Rick hates the Bard class and refuses to let Morty play the Bard. He says the Bard is the worst. It's the most horrible. It's because Rick's very first character he created was a Bard. Oh. <laughs> and they've literally been like, look, we're sick of living in this half-baked, unfinished world, so now we've infected your dimension with the D&D &D plague. We're going to steal your portal gun, invade the main world, and also we're kicking you off to the Tomb of Horrors, which, if you know anything about Dungeons & Dragons, is the deadliest, most mm -hmm. party killing -est, most famous dungeon of all, and Rick has to now go through it without his portal gun or any of his gadgets. Oh, no. <laughs> and I'm like, this is a cool setup, because the first part of this story was very simple that's hey what if the rick and morty characters did D? &D? that's yeah. funny here's subs like let's actually expand this concept yeah let, let's go deep into it and indeed he does and it's very fun and very funny and if you liked the first part i'm sure you'll like this one too i should give them a read the, the only thing stopping me and i know it's it's i know from you explaining it to me it's nothing like that is the whole rick and morty thing and like the fandom mm. that's the only thing yeah. stopping me from reading these that, that, I think, is the beautiful thing about this book is that because they take something that's already nerdy like Rick and Morty and <laughs> mix it with Dungeons and Dragons, there's a layer of disconnect to the bad Rick and Morty fans yeah, yeah. who can't penetrate that. Yeah, who can't get in because they're not into D&D. &D. <laughs> and let's face it, I mean, every fandom has their bad fans, but yes, the, the Rick and Morty fans, the bad ones, have been especially loud and annoying and made it hard to enjoy. Yes, but yes, you can read the first part, the original uh, Rick and Morty versus D and D. That's finished, and you can hop onto this. It's a very quick read and very fun. Awesome. If you got to travel anywhere, you could probably like knock it out on a bus or a train or something. Mm -hmm. It's good, good shit. But uh, yeah, that was uh, that was one of the different things I read this week. Nice. I I read uh, the new Spider Man book from JJ and Henry Abrams right i almost started this now uh, matt i'm glad you were able to be on the show this week because i know you're a bit of a celebrity now <laughs> as as your tweet review of this was picked up by the nerdist and like i i, I was almost a little jealous because i'm like that's the perfect tweet to put at the end of this conversation i literally can't write a better review than matt's tweet <laughs> and it was dead on accurate <laughs> that's what you, really you really surprised me so yeah oh no my comments were filled with like spider-man fans who fucking hated this book uh so yeah this book um is it's obviously not set in the main continuity it's just like a just just a book 
Um, which is the big Abrams mystery box because yeah. they didn't tell us that it wasn't going to be in the main universe, but we probably should have known because the font wasn't the regular Spider-Man <laughs> font. It was the weird 90s font, which, again, yeah. they were kind of telling you. Uh, so, yeah, uh, this it picks up in the middle of, like, chaos. Something's, like, attacking New York, and uh, Mary Jane goes to find Peter, who's battling this thing. Uh, Peter is, like, all fucked up. He's basically lost an arm. Um, mm. yeah, and she's telling him like the rules have changed now because they have a son. Uh, he needs to leave this battle, uh, because of that. Like, uh, What's the kid's he, name? uh, the kid's name is Ben Parker. Naturally. Um, yeah. So he needs to leave this battle and escape while he can. Uh, it's too late because this villain, uh, whose, whose name is cadaverous. Uh, he looks like a real anime villain. I'm oh like, I yeah. Don't he's have totally Crunchy is. Role. What? What series did this guy come from? What what yeah. mech show did this guy come from? Uh, he, he appears with like all his like robot, biological robot thingies, um, and he he attacks them, and Mary Jane gets killed, mm. and uh, then the book cuts to twelve years later, and Ben Ben is uh, obviously a high school student, and he's he's also developing his own powers, his own spider mm. powers. Uh, his, he's estranged with his father because his father na now armless, uh, he's got a prosthetic arm, uh, is a reporter for the, the daily bugle. And he's always off on huh. assignments and stuff like that. And he's never around. So the relationship there isn't, you know, it isn't there. Like he's an estranged father. So Ben is living with a very old aunt May. Yes. Yeah. I saw that. Um, and he's getting in trouble at school because he's like helping people, helping people from bullies and everything. And there's a great part where Peter, Peter comes to pick him up and, and tells him like, sometimes, you know, doing the right thing also makes you wrong. Like sometimes you just don't need to do anything. Like this is a broken Peter Parker, basically right, it's like, who's doing, now the, the, uh... doing the right, the right thing often leads to like the death of someone you love or like so he's something giving the bad. opposite of with great power comes great yeah. responsibility now yeah yeah uh and ben ben doesn't really subscribe to that he wants to do good uh but mm. like having a father like that isn't doing him too well he ends up developing these powers and uh the book kind of ends with aunt may saying like oh go upstairs and like look in this like floorboard and that's where he finds like peter's old costume Mm. yes I, I i breezed through the book i didn't read it but yeah that the, I, I can understand why that probably got under some people's uh uh, hawk, <laughs> uh cockles if you will because yeah it sounds like a story we've heard before and i know a lot of people were really pissed off at just the general nepotism of the project but it doesn't sound like the worst thing ever like people were making it sound no oh i'm really interested in that like because it's obviously a father-son writing the book i'm interested in that mm. relationship with a father son in the book naturally which again i'm like is this jj abrams writing himself where it's like look son sometimes i'll be away saving the world and by saving the world i mean making movies and that's why i've neglected <laughs> exactly you. one day we'll write spider-man i will <laughs> leverage my power so we can how old is his kid anyway uh i'm not too sure i i would say like probably like late teens maybe 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 like 20 or something yeah i saw that little I video and he was like quite quite older than i than I anticipated. Uh, his son is 19, apparently. Oh, huh. Okay, nice. Interesting. So right in I that mean... in that gap where like where um uh where Ben Parker is in like still high school, uh just uh... coming out of high school sort of thing. So it's like you know how much meta text here, how much is just the Abrams writing their own life story? Yeah, yeah, it's it it'd be interesting, and of course you've got the whole mystery box with Abrams, of course, so. Uh, it's it's going to be interesting because there is a panel where like the cadaverous is like his whole deal is he's looking to do something with like a woman who's in like a stasis chamber like bring her back to life i'm like oh is that mary jane because you can't see the woman properly and i'm on, and i right, wonder if right. like maybe that's mary jane <laughs> i'm damn 19 nepotism <laughs> man you know it, it's funny I, I won't comment on the nepotism i'll just say you know i wish i wish my daddy was a major hollywood <laughs> director so i could write any comic book character i wanted my my daddy was only a drywall taper and the most he ever got me was uh some free movie tickets one time when he helped patch the roof of the local movie theater from falling down you know <laughs> same difference basically <laughs> you know he was also there for me so i wouldn't need to write that story <laughs> If I wrote that story, it would just be like, yep, and Peter and his kid had fun adventures and hung out and liked each other's company very much. The end. 
good. So maybe it's good I didn't get to write whatever comic hero <laughs> I wanted. <laughs> There's a lesson in there, but yeah, you, you you sound like you didn't hate it, and you sound like you're maybe like one of the only people who didn't hate it. Yeah, it it's fine. Like again, like Spider Man fans have this thing of where they have to hate everything, like that comes out about the character. Like the character existing, like frustrates them. <laughs> do you do you think people might actually like it a little bit more if they had been a bit more upfront to be like, yes, this is an Elseworld story. This I, is this, I mean, that, whatever. Yeah, but like you just using like a little bit of logic and brain power would, would have told you that it was out of continuity. You, you know what it actually reminds me of as you sit here and describe it? Remember that Nightwing New World Order book, which was mm-hmm. also about a broken down Nightwing in the future yeah. trying to relate to his kid in a post superhero world? That's really mm-hmm. what it reminds me of. Yeah, it's, it's very similar. Yeah. 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 I'll, I'll give it a look. I might check it out tomorrow because i know people are probably interested in and gotta gotta get them clickies even if i don't keep up with it (laughs) to get them clickies gotta gotta get them in there it's not every day a major hollywood director says that yes i want to help co-write a uh, superhero book (laughs) so you know gotta get into that i think too a lot of people complain to it's like how how dare you give spider-man a kid and it not be the kid that i like it'd not be a daughter (laughs) It'd, it'd not be mayday parker because she's the one entrenched in the fan base which again if the dude writing this is only 19, he's like, I don't know who that is. Yeah, of course you don't. Yeah, or as well, it's like, what's wrong with having a kid named Ben Parker? Like, it's great. It's, it, yeah. There's nothing wrong in that. <laughs> and he's had it before, yeah. so, you know. It's true. Some fans are hard to please, I tells you. Oh, God. Are they ever? Uh, I, I had two last ones here, and I imagine you and I shared one of these. Nice. What'd you read? Uh, I had uh, Absolute Carnage, number three. I did that as well. Some very fun ideas pitched in this issue, mainly that Bruce Banner the Hulk has never actually had a symbiote. I'm like, really? That's <laughs> true. Unt- until now. <laughs> that's that's a shocking bit of trivia where it's like, yeah. really, the Red Hulk has had one, but he has not it, had not, one. Not it's only that, that not only that, this was like the first meeting of Eddie and Bruce. Well, t- yeah, exactly. The Hulk and Venom had met before, yeah. but as they say, we weren't ourselves when we met, because it's true, there was a Venom versus Hulk series, but they never met each other untransformed. Yeah, this is also strange because, like, Bruce Banner is there. <laughs> like, just there. Yeah, is, it's like, isn't he supposed to be kind of evil and on the run from the government right now? And didn't the last time he see the Avengers, he, like, whooped all their asses into the ground? Yeah, yeah. That's that's fine, you know. He 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 gets a reprieve and a pass because you know symbiote invasion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, extenuating circumstances. We'll we'll get back to that later. <laughs> we promise. <laughs> but yeah, it was really just like, hey, I'm Bruce Banner. I actually figured out how to work the Maker's machine, and I can actually make it do what it's supposed to do now. But with the caveat, anyone who gets put through it will be out for a couple hours. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I enjoyed that. I enjoyed a lot of Venom and Venom and Eddie's narration. Uh, yeah, it, they're it, both compromising their morality and doing shit they shouldn't be. Yeah, and that Venom is he's getting kind of desperate in the fact that he wants to destroy carnage for ruining his name and or bring in about gods and stuff like that. He's so desperate that like he's willing to leave Eddie for someone who is willing to actually kill carnage when it needs to happen. It's this really interesting scenario where it's like, we've seen Eddie in the suit fight before, but this is for totally non petty reasons. It's like, look, we both want to do the right thing here. I want to defeat carnage. I want to save my kid but we can't do these both at the same time so we're at odds <laughs> yeah yeah i i like that uh, i like that eddie eddie is taking a bit more charge as well where he's like no i i put my foot down i i have a kid now i can't go around being lethal protector anymore mm-hmm. <laughs> to which the suit's like all right fine i'll go find someone who's super lethal hey hulk get over here <laughs> <laughs> i i love that that last little bit of panel because obviously like I, it's probably going to be explained in one of the times, but somehow like Carnage like duplicated Eddie and like switched out his place. Somewhere. Oh, that was that. Uh, they actually explained that in the free comic book day issue because they okay. offhandedly they offhandedly mentioned, oh, Eddie was framed for something that went down at the raft. Okay, yeah, I know, I know they mentioned that, yeah, in this book, and I, but I thought that that was like a mention to like the stuff that happened in the um uh the what do you call it the stuff that happened just before in oh what's the i would keep wanting to say arkham ravencroft no 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 that was actually a thing that happened in the free comic book day issue uh, carnage okay. shape-shifted into eddie went into uh. raven or, or uh, went into whatever the prison is the raft 
caused a bunch of shit, and that's why he's framed at the beginning of the book because right. courage can shape shift too. Right. Right. So that's how they explained it, because he switched out with him. And he did it again for no other reason than just to be creepy. He could have killed yeah. them all, but he just wanted to be creepy. Yeah, he, he just wanted to be creepy. And uh, that led to, obviously, Bruce Banner becoming the Hulk and becoming the symbiote-infected Hulk. And there's a really cool paddle where he, he th- where Carnage thinks he's killed Bruce because he's, like, mm-hmm. stabbed him before the, the uh, symbiote can get on him properly. But that just obviously turns him into the Hulk. And the Hulk hits him, and he's like, oh, fuck, that hurt. <laughs> we are hulk which is hilarious because i'm like man how many voices does bruce banner have bouncing around <laughs> in his head right now the hulk the venom symbiote mr fix it the devil hulk yeah all these voices vying for control <laughs> man poor banner he must just be like shut up shut up everyone shut up uh that, that's gonna be really cool a uh, venom infected hulk like that that's pretty damn op <laughs> and ewing is getting a tie-in too apparently Ooh, interesting it's not in the main Immortal Hulk series. It's like a special one-off. Okay. And I'm like, well, what the, what the, I was remember seeing that. And I'm like, what the hell does the Immortal Hulk have to do with this? Oh, this is why. Yeah. This is what he, ha- oh, the chat also says there, uh, sleep or the cat. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. That was from the last issue of, uh, Venom when, when, when we saw that body. Yeah. To have a new body. Where it's like, dude, if you can just be whatever you want, why wouldn't you want to be a cat? Yeah, yeah, just Everyone be a loves cat. a cat. And no one suspects be... the cat. No one ever suspects the cat. <laughs> uh, all right. I, I had one final book, and I actually got back into a Magnificent Miss Marvel. Oh, nice. How was that? Eh, you know, it's a lot to take in. This is solid <laughs> in a mid, really trying to reinvent the wheel on this one, and also trying to, I think, prolong the Kamala character a little longer. Okay. So she had a whole adventure in space where she got the brand new costume, which is like advanced Kree tech. It's basically like a symbiote. She can control it with her mind. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's cool. But I kind of liked the DIY nature of Miss Marvel. I can understand she can't do that forever. Spider-Man changed his suits a lot. That's part of growing as a hero. You need to get a new costume. Mm Mm-hmm. But I'm just like, all right, I can deal with that. Also, this same alien adventure caused her parents to forget that she actually came out as a hero to them. So now they don't remember. Oh, okay. And Miss Marvel's like, oh, well, I should just tell them again, right? Because, you know, I, I was truthful once. I should be truthful again. Maybe you shouldn't, though, because your dad actually has some strange unknown disease and is dying now. <laughs> so maybe you shouldn't put that extra pressure on them. So she's like, ah, crap, I can't do that. But, yeah, so they've really kind of changed up her status quo. Some in ways I like, some in ways I don't like. Okay. But uh, the big thrust of this issue is that uh, her and her friends decide to go for sandwiches uh, in an area that has been taken over by a Amazon-esque temp company called Rubicon. <laughs> nice. And they're like, man, you know, they're coming here into New York. They're gentrifying the area. We're never going to be able to get Euro sandwiches here anymore if these guys keep moving. And they're basically zombies. Look how they're shambling around. No, but they actually are zombies, though, all the people <laughs> who are working for Rubicon. Oh, that's great. And, oh, only instead of saying brains, brains, they say report, report. <laughs> and I'm like, that's actually more terrifying. And of course, we find out that uh, another thing Amit is doing is trying to build Kamala's rogues gallery. So he brings back both Discord and Lockdown, who are two characters that she fought before. Uh, mm-hmm. Lockdown is interesting because she was also a protege of Carol Danvers, only when Carol was like super into locking people up during Civil mm-hmm. War Two. Okay. And where Carol's like, oh, that was bad. I shouldn't do that anymore. Becky Lockdown's like, fuck you. I'm going to lock up whoever I want. This shit is <laughs> sick. Awesome, bro. <laughs> and Discord, who's probably the most interesting because he was actually Kamala and all of theirs friend, Josh. He mm-hmm. went to school with them. Mm-hmm. But then he found out that his girlfriend, Zoe, uh, was actually gay and came out. So he freaked out and joined Hydra. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Yes, this was during Civil War II. They're like, you joined Hydra once. Like, oh, my girlfriend came out as gay. You all don't like me. There's no safe place for white men anymore. <laughs> so I joined this Nazi death cult. Yes. And now because Hydra's obviously gone, because the Red Skull's just living in Lucan's head right now, he's joined up with Rubicon. And I'm like, oh, I see what you're doing here from Nazi death cult to Tech Valley, right? Mm-hmm. Going, yeah, you're, t- you're ticking all the boxes, Josh. <laughs> I see what you're doing. <laughs> Next, he's going to have a YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And a page patreon and then they got to be kicked off there so he's gonna have to go to some other platform exactly 
Yeah, he's, he's going to be on Gab or whatever that one is for people who got kicked off Twitter. He'll be on there. So, look, everyone, follow, follow me. Disc, Discord on Discord, because his name is Discord. That's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> follow me here. We're going to be streaming roguelike later, me and all the other guys from the <laughs> men's group. But yeah, he's back now. He's a villain. It's very funny, and it's just, okay, I see I see what you're doing here, Amid. I can understand you're trying to mature Kamala as a character and have her fit the more traditional superhero mold with mm -hmm. recurring villains and having to keep a secret identity. But at the same time, too, I'm like, I don't like walking backwards in this story. And I know if she's getting a show and everything, you want a status quo close to what people are used to mm -hmm. for superheroes. But I don't know. I'm not 100% sold on it. Like, I'll keep reading it. And I enjoy it. It's good. Salt in the Mid is a good writer. But I actually think I'm enjoying more what he's doing with Spider-Man now. Okay, yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's uh, that's me. Cool. Uh, I've got two more books. Uh, All right. The, the first one is Supergirl issue 34. Uh, nice. It's the... I, I want to say the beginning of a new story, but it's basically going to be Mark and Draco actually building what Leviathan is, uh, and oh, actually nice. doing all the work for Bendis. Um, so, <laughs> so obviously Supergirl has returned home after the last issue of Superman. Uh, and she, she finds out about Leviathan and, and all that. And she's like, right, well, I'm not just going to sit on my hands. I'm going to actually get to the bottom of this. And she starts investigating them. And, uh, that takes her back to Shea Veritas and, and, oh. uh, she wants to track down Eliza and Jeremiah, her adoptive parents. Right. Because this is, because this is now hooked up to the event yeah. of that Leviathan one shot. Yeah. Uh, Shay says that she can't because they might be in hiding or undercover and doesn't want to blow their cover. But, uh, she, Supergirl knows she's lying to her because, uh, what's really happened is Eliza has been killed uh, or, oh. or at least been killed because, uh, Supergirl tracks down her bionic hand, like the signal in it and finds it oh. in like an, a medical examiner's office in like a body bag filled with like just gore. <laughs> it's just like gruesome, shit. gruesome like That's skulls and shit. And That's pretty dark for this book. <laughs> yeah. And, um, so she thinks that she's dead and that's when leviathan soldiers come for her and we don't know why they've come for her yet but she she like takes them down but they end up getting the best of her because they have kryptonite weapons and oh, that's she, new. she is only saved by a masked man who is revealed to be jeremiah danvers uh who kill oh. who kills one of the the uh, leviathan soldiers before they teleport away uh, so the book looks to be sending both of them together with crypto to investigate Leviathan. And I guarantee you they'll do more, a better job than the actual event Leviathan people. Oh, probably event Leviathan has had four issues and nothing has happened. I'm yeah. Or more has happened surprised. in this issue. <laughs> God damn. Um, all while that's going on, we obviously had Brainiac one accept Lex Luthor's offer, which was unfettered access mm. to the fortress of solitude uh to gain nope. the information of the the universe and basically it's it's funny it's actually a pretty funny line where uh he is he's now he didn't have all of this knowledge of the universe before but now he does so now he can call himself brainiac ah ha, ha, that's fun uh so that's going to be really interesting because it's like the robot brainiac like the full robot brainiac that's this one right. it's no relation to like real, real Drox or anything so I mean, they haven't really explained where he's come from. Mm, interesting. But yeah, yeah, Malcolm Draco looks to be like fixing all the shit Bendis is doing. So I'm all for that. Someone has to, and I guess he has to hurry up too, because his run will be done soon enough. Yeah, yeah. I'm guessing, yeah, it'll be finishing up just after Event Leviathan, I think. God damn Event Leviathan. I think, you know, <laughs> if we ever took a tally of the most nothing happening events, that would be the one. That would be the one. I Nothing has happened. Nothing is going to happen. <laughs> How can you be so short and still have nothing happen? It's really impressive. <laughs> it's really, really impressive. $30,000 a book, Joel. 30, 30, the most highest paid man in comics today. <laughs> and he does nothing. <laughs> And he does that. Man, I wish I had that gig. I wish I was the highest paid man in podcasting who my trick was I didn't come out with a podcast. Or I did, and it was just pointing at me saying and doing nothing. Yeah, yeah. For just an hour and 30 minutes. Drinking a coffee or something. I don't know. Oh, man, I wish I had a coffee. On a good day, I drink some coffee because, you know, that kind of feels like something's happening. <laughs> but not always. Uh, you had one more you were saying? Yeah, one more. And it's probably one of the best books I've read, not just this week, but probably this oh. year. Uh, and that is the Year of the Villain Lex Luthor one-shot. 
Oh shit, that came by, out? Yeah, by Jason Latour and Brian Hitch. How did I miss this one? Okay, please tell me about this. <laughs> uh, this totally so, flew under my radar. Oh god, you got to pick it up. Um, so this okay. issue sees Lex traveling the multiverse and killing his counterparts. So uh, they don't like counterparts he thinks are worthy of the Luther name, uh, ones right. that he see as a threat to his and Perpetua's plans naturally uh and first he goes to earth 38 and picks up like a younger version of himself and uh the issue is kind of like like a um like uh like ebenezer scrooge like he's taking this little kid <laughs> through time to like these are all like the different versions here's a version that's like batman and has superman as his alfred and is friends with a martian kryptonian <laughs> hybrid called cal uh oh, wow. and all this stuff and yeah he's taking them through and he's like visiting all these earths to see if they live up to the luther name and the ones that <laughs> do he he like kills or the ones he, he views as a threat he kills that's actually really fitting when we stop and consider how many times alternate luthors have come to tip the scales mm -hmm. in a crisis style events and how many times luthors from other universes yeah. have fucked luther himself up yeah yeah so he's going through all these uh, ones he he meets like a luther called doom thor which is lex luther turned into doomsday um oh. uh, which he takes to the universe where the batman luther is and sets him loose on the super <laughs> the superman of that world um what a dick. He's, yeah he's just like fucking up all these people's plans <laughs> he, meet, he, he he's really rick and mortying through yeah, time is what he's yeah, doing yeah 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 he meet he meets one he meets a lex luther who never turned into a villain or an arch enemy of of uh superman because he instead of going to medical school he decided to take up the thurman uh that you know that, that the and because <laughs> of that yeah. and because of that he became the shoemaker <laughs> oh <laughs> and so he's not some he's just like but he's aware of like other luthers and everything so he's like yeah yeah i took up the thurman and medical school you know choices have consequences and then he's like killed <laughs> <laughs> i was a lot happier <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah um he he meets oh it's it's such a great bit of character development this part so he goes to this he goes to earth one in the future and it's an earth where lex luther has won against superman and mm. it didn't kill superman or anything because uh clark is still alive and explaining because he used the black mercy on him um oh, shit. and and but nice but what happened is is it led to this lex dying and being killed and he's and this lex is in a hospital bed in a coma he's got a big smile on his face because he's won <laughs> and apex lex arrives there and like fucking yells at him it's like why how did you ever think that something so meager as beating a superman was worth your fucking time like you're a <laughs> disgrace to the luther name <laughs> oh i hate you now because i've evolved beyond you now this yeah. is what i used to think was yeah, cool so below me right now and, and he leaves him alive though um but the last Amazing. one the last one he visits is one that um is alex who got into botany and oh. uh, uh used his his abilities to help the world and and everything mm. and this lex uh for all intents and purposes is a good guy he uses uh the black the black mercy as a t because he's built up a tolerance to it. He uses it as a T oh. so he can... Because he's learned the Black Mercy doesn't create dreams, it creates realities. Oh. Um, and he uses it to go to other realities where he's a hero, he's the Flash, he's the Superman, he's the Shazam, he's all these heroes uh, to make it feel like he's actually done something with... Like, been given a second chance and done something oh, with wow. his life. Uh, but he doesn't think he's, he's like use those opportunities well but uh the one thing he does see is like the superman and like he 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 knows that like lex obviously had like the petty quarrels with the superman and uh he 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 basically lays it down for lex where he's like you you fought superman because he he had something unique and you were looking for something unique to stand out for, and you didn't have that and you're mad that this guy had something unique and was using those gifts those unique gifts to help people that's really smart and also really enforces why Lex would be willing to work for someone like Perpetua mm -hmm. when he's been such a selfless person for so long or so self-centered, I should say. It also kind of like explains to me the idea where it's like, no, Lex Luthor's greatest villain isn't Superman. Lex Luthor's greatest enemy is Lex Luthor because he's constantly getting into his own That's an exact line that this, this guy says. He says like, the, it's like, you were the master at only ever fooling yourself that's wow that does sound like some 10 out of 10 shit um and 
yeah so uh, this luther actually ends up dying because the little kid luther kills him and uh we find out this whole whole story hasn't been lex trying to go around the multiverse killing uh people the whole story has been him taking this youngest version of himself and testing him to see if he is a true luther and if he's a true luther lex took him back into the main reality put a uh black mercy on him and this has all been his dreams uh, as lex has been keeping this child in cryostasis as a backup for a human version of himself so we've already explained how to get out of it now when apex yeah, so lex has run its course how like it looks. yeah it's kind of required reading yeah wow this is the first now of these that has actually become required reading yeah it's so fucking good it just Man, gets it for, for all my pissing and moaning about the early year of the villain books, that Riddler one shot last week was mm -hmm. great, and this one sounds also great. Yeah, the Sinestro, the, the only one that hasn't been good is the Black Mask one. Yeah, which Black Mask almost feels like a joke on Black Mask yeah. about being like, why can't he be a bigger villain? Because he's not actually that good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wow, that I will be. As soon as we're done here, I'm going to go pick that up. I'm going to oh, add that it's to my cart. So damn good. <laughs> That's, I like Jason Latour. You know, it's funny. Jason Latour, he's, you know, a constant, you know, uh, collaborator with other people. But I think he's finally really growing into his own as like a dude uh, who can headline. Yeah. I, I was reading this. And I was like, what was the last thing I read by Jason Latour? It's been a while since I read something by him. Yeah, same here. Well, that's good. That sounds great, actually. I will be sure yeah. to look into that. So is that everything, Matt? Is that everything from this week? That is everything. Whew, this was a jam-packed show, everyone. We had quite a few people watching us. Thank you, everyone, for joining us late on a Sunday night. We had like 30 people in here. I appreciate it. I know there's lots of other places you can be in that a lot of people have work in the morning. But, of course, thank you, Ted, Evia, and DNG, and Real Amos, and Amazing Spider-Man, and Marvel Knight, and everyone else who's been hanging out with us, especially the people who I forgot because I don't see your name on screen <laughs> right now. KT, of course. And Space um, Lord. Yeah, Space Lord, Lucky, you know, all the uh, all, all the warriors. We got all the warriors, all the regulars <laughs> here tonight. Uh, as always, uh, if you are a patron, you can listen to this episode first before anyone else as soon as it goes up. Matt and I try and get this done usually the next day due to the time difference and everything. Uh, that's both audio and video version. Uh, anyone can listen to the audio version. If you want the video version, that's a perk for $5 and up. Uh, definitely worth the value. We're putting all sorts of stuff up there. I'll be trying to put another commentary up there soon because it's uh, beginning of October, and that's usually what we do in that situation. Uh, Matt, you said you had con stuff you were doing. You just came back from OzCon. Yeah, I just came back from OzCon, so expect like a little video sometime in the, well, probably before this actually goes up on YouTube. Um, so yeah, expect to see that. Expect to see some like cool photos. They had a giant Tie Fighter there, which was really cool. Ugh. So I got cool pictures of that. Oh, so freaking cool. So be on the lookout for that. I, of course, will be going to London Comic Con uh, in two weeks. That's London, Ontario, not London, England, as I keep <laughs> saying. Uh, I actually got all my merch for a change, Matt. I actually got all my freaking merch, and I can actually show it off, and hopefully uh, some people want to buy it. Nice. That's awesome. Also, thanks to Tom, not Tom Gallagher, the Tom we know, but Tom of the band Detreya there for helping me out actually making an events page uh, for my panel, which will be on the Saturday. We're talking about uh, superhero uh, movies, how they took over Hollywood, why they're such a big deal. That's the panel I'm going to be talking about. Awesome. So, yeah, be sure to check that one out. I'm going to try and film that and have that one up in some capacity for people to see it. Again, I'm a one-man film crew, so sorry if it sucks. I'm thinking I'm just going to plant my little mini uh, tripod in the camera next to me and, like, record with my phone or some shit if I have to. <laughs> but, yes, uh, thank you, everyone. As always, too, you can find this show every Wednesday on uh, the Cape Joel channel at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Although I think uh, not either next week or the week after that, the week I go, we're going to be doing a commentary and the fans have chosen. They want to hear us do Under the Red Hood, Matt, is what they want. I thought they said Dark Phoenix, Joel. I'm pretty <laughs> sure they said Under the Red Hood, man. Which, actually, I'm shocked people actually said Under the Red Hood because we had that. We had Mask of the Phantasm. We had the killing joke. There was a lot of like serious Joker content there. I'm surprised they picked Under the Red Hood. But come to think of it, I don't think we've ever done the one. I had to actually go back and look into my own file. I'm like, did we do this one already? No, no we didn't we haven't. actually. No, we haven't. That's shocking. I'm like, surely we did it and I lost it. But I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> but yes thank you everyone for coming out and 
watching and listening. Always appreciate it. Be sure to find us here again next week at the same time, because I guess the Comic Multiverse is a live show now. I guess so, yeah. Maybe we'll do some live, some not. We'll, we'll, we'll decide. We'll, we'll, we'll put it out there. I mean, the commentary we can't do live. So, again, if we don't come back in a week or so or two weeks or so, it's because we're doing the commentary. That's why. Yeah. But again, you'll be able to find that at all the regular outlets. Thank you, everyone. Uh, always appreciate it. And we will be back again next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.